Hmm. That was weird. Oh, well, good day, brothers and sisters. This is the other Paul. Welcome back to another stream at this time in an unusual hour for me at 8 p.m. Um, because I felt like it, I guess. Um, ooh, this will help me get through my afternoon shift. Impressive. Very nice. So I assume you mean like watching the replay or something, Orthochog? I don't know. Either way, good to see you. Good to see you, Isaac Kirk, if that's how you pronounce it. Yay, a live stream I can actually make. Let's go. Let's go. Given my um given my new job now, uh nighttime live streams may actually be slightly more frequent. So I guess that'll be kind of cool for people of uh people of these hours. So uh yeah, it's pretty awesome. And even better, this one is gonna be a very simple chill stream. So uh, plenty of audience interaction, plenty of fun times. As we laugh and cry at the cringe of uh, Dr. Michael Bird. <laughs> Great timing coincides with my lunch break. Epic, even better. Now nah, watch KF. Awesome. At work. Very nice. Impressive. Very nice. <laughs> Very base indeed. Yes. And unironically, Kirk is pronounced Shirk. <laughs> really? It's pronounced Shirk? What's, why is there a K then? What, what, who spelt that, bro? What, who, who ran the, um, whatchamacallit, the, uh, the Latin transliteration department and decided to spell your name like that? Did they just have like, what, were they down like 12 bottles of, ab of absinthe or something? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Either way, let's get right to it. I'm going to, I'm going to pop up the first video, but to kind of give a brief summary of what's happening tonight, if anyone does not know what's going on. Um, basically just reacting to Michael Bird stuff, like most recent stuff, both this clip, which is like, it's, it's an older one. Um, but still, I remember seeing that when I first happened like years ago and my word was a cringe, um, and, and blasphemous, but then we'll also look at two of Bird's most recent, uh, videos just, just, just for the heck of it. Um, I think I did it at the behest of someone, so, uh, someone on the, on the, on the discord channel, maybe, or on Twitter. I'm not sure. Just like. Hey, react to Michael Bird. And I was like, yeah, sure. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we're just going to do that. We're going to start with this nice and short one. And, uh, and, uh, as a result, uh, call for, call for the execution of a blasphemer of our Lord. <laughs> Unironic, uh, un ironically, ironically, half ironically. Swedish is funny though. AK can be pronounced sure in some contexts. That's so cringe. Oh, hey, Jeff. Good to see you, mate. Good to see you. Um, oh man, it's so cringe. So cringe. Actually, Jeff, if you, if you feel like it, I can give you a link and you can hop on as well. That'll be, that'll be fun to have you on as well to have some banter about Michael Burr because it, it it's, it's going to be, I previewed some of the other stuff that we'll be looking at as well. Like not fully, but to it, to an extent, and it's going to be, it's going to be a juicy one. It's going to be fun. So if you want to join, just tell me and I'll, uh, I'll shoot you over an invite link. Um, but, uh, yeah, so this is the first video um at the for, for some context this is this is a a uh comedian quote unquote um with one of the news channels and he went to a conference for the Australian Christian Lobby which is basically basically our main big um Christian lobbying organization in Australia conservative traditional all, all that jazz and uh he he went there to just try to have some fun stir basically stir shit um and yeah, he, he he tried, and uh, unfortunately, he baited uh, Michael Bird pretty well. Um, and Bird tried to seem cool to the seculars, to seem cool to the non-Christians, you know. Um, but yeah, going swimming for the last day of summer while the pool is still open. Very nice. Okay, now you have big fun with that. You have some fun with that. Hey, Rutabir Rabbit, Rubatu Rabbit, good to see you. I really like your blog. I realized that that was actually you um uh, at that blog that's actually really awesome very nice to have you does bird represent the average conservative aussie christian not no i'd say no i'd say he doesn't um he's pseudo conservative basically um i i was on evangelical dark webs channel um was it last week or the week before i think i think the week before and we reacted to a recent like small substack article of his where he like he feigns to be pro-life but then he talks about legitimate reasons for abortion, like rape, incest, um, medical complications, and many others, quote unquote. So it's like, okay, you're pro-choice. You're pro-choice. You're not pro-life, mate. Come on. That's just so uh yeah, uh, just a just a big example of uh wolf in sheep's clothing, unfortunately, which sucks because he's otherwise not a not a too shabby biblical scholar, except for his egalitarianism, which is like, oh my word, please. Um, 
But uh, we used, in my Bachelor of Theology, we used his um, commentary on Romans in the Story of God, uh, the Story of God series, commentary series. Still got it on my shelf over there. Um, and, and it was good. It was pretty decent. It's um, pretty good. Um, he's reformed as well, so that's 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 kind of cool. Um, and, of course, he went toe-to-toe with Bart Ehrman on the gospel issues and that, which was like pretty cool. I didn't go big deep into that, but it was, it was cool what he did with that. Um, but unfortunately, especially lately, he's just taken an absolute nosedive in 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 reputa- uh, reputability, in reputable nature, whatever, reputation. So, yeah, that's him, unfortunately. Um, I reckon we just get right into this one. Just uh, got my tea ready. Love me some Irish breakfast. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, just hang on just uh, one second. All good. All right. Let us play this first one. And for anyone who hasn't seen it, uh, hold on to your seatbelts because it is really um, uh, blasphemous from a so-called Christian Anglican priest and scholar and so-called conservative who's speaking at the ACL the Australian Christian lobby. That's the most shocking part of this as well. Whoops, hang on. Uh, where's the video? Where'd I put the video? Kind of lost it for one. Where'd I put it? I am brain dead. I am brain, wait, 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 wait. Where's the YouTube vid? I was, I'm literally sharing it. Oh yeah, here it is. Okay, I was, I was brain dead. All right, let's do this. I'm here at the 2017 Australian Christian Lobby Conference. Now, as a homosexual atheist, I'm melting. Melting. So good. Amen. Amen in the chat. The homosexuals melting guys in the light of God. So good. So good. Look at that face. That face and that... My my word. Can I zoom into that? Uh, Barely. Yeah, that, that just... That's the face of our enemy right there. That's, this is, this is their physiognomy. (laughs) Just like, that's them. It's, it's the gaping mouth of like pagan idols. That's, that's what we're facing here, boys. Oh man. And uh, yeah, gay atheists as well. So that's just, I I almost don't want to touch my computer screen. I don't want to get something, you know, anyway. I can tell you a funny story. I'll tell you a real funny story. Yep. Okay, so there's... <laughs> Not gonna lie, perfect frame to stop on. <laughs> That's the perfect frame. <laughs> That's it. That's it. The mouths of heretics are always gaping. <laughs> See, bird. <laughs> wonder if I was doing a pogger's face there. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is Bird's attempt at being hip and cool with the unbelievers to show that not all Christians are these upstuck traditionalists, but where some of us are cool and hip and we can make edgy jokes too. Um, and, and you'll see what I mean by that in a second. It's actually disgusting. I taught religious education to some, to some uh, students and I asked them a very provocative question. I said to them, did Jesus ever have an erection? Did Jesus have an erection? I believe he did. Multiple erections? Yeah, the course of his life. He began an orgasm. I don't know, he may have had, probably had a nocturnal emission as a teenager. Okay. Oh, we all, we all have. Hmm? Would he have? Help that along if he wasn't around that long. Oh, what do you mean by help that along? You mean like if uh, choke the chicken? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know about that. Just to be very clear, you brought up Jesus and erections. I want to make that it very clear. Fault. I know it's from the Godless ABC, but that yeah. was your call, sir. And yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, this com- this co- this this commentary stuff. By the way, that's from that's from woke preacher clips. And uh, yeah, Ballard, this this gay atheist guy, he's actually got the point here. You, the Anglican priest and scholar, speaking at a traditional lobbying group, brought up out of nowhere 
how I teach my children, I taught my students that's for religious education about whether Jesus had an erection. What's wrong with you, mate? What is actually wrong with you? Now, as the scholar guy myself, there is a way to approach such a question in a genuine spirit of exploring the nature of what does it mean for Christ to be man? To what extent did Christ experience the, the passions of man? And so in that very dispassionate sense, you could, okay, ask the question, might he be experienced that? I don't know. But then you've got to ask one, you've got to ask yourself before you even attempt that question, one, why is that coming to your mind? Why is that important to you? Like, like seriously, come on. And um, I can think of a very ex extremely narrow range of where that could be, that where that could be a legitimate discussion, you know, extremely narrow range, um, such as like um, Jesus being God, man, but then humans are sexual by their nature. So how, how would that kind of interact? How, how would that do that? And so there could be a, a decent way to go about that. And so if he wants, if he just wanted to say dispassionately, um, Jesus was a man, he experienced to some degree certain passions. So yeah, maybe he would have, you know, what he said at the initial part there, but then do it in such a cavalier and lighthearted and suggestive manner as Michael Bird did. Um, and even to when, when Ballard suggested the whole um, basically wanking um, to go, what do I mean? You mean, you think he uh, choked the chicken? I, I, bro, are you on crack? Are you a Christian? This is your Lord you're talking about. This is your creator. Would you, would he be caught dead saying that? about the dean of his university, wherever he teaches that. Would he be caught dead saying that on camera about him? God, no. So then why would he say that about his creator? The absolute numpty, absolute numpty. What the frick is this? Bruh, so true, Tommy. It's good to see you here, Tommy. If you try to be edgy, the world will see through it and respect you even less. So true. Okay, it started something that could charitably be taken as defending the incarnation and then three seconds took a nosedive into open blasphemy. Yeah, exactly. Um, but even being that charitable is unnecessary. Yep, yep, that's right, that's right. You can just see it in in um, Bird's posture. He just, he really wants to be on the good side of this gay atheist. Oh, man. Yeah, it's weird because this is out of the blue. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So if this was, and what's weird, it wasn't just out of the blue in this interview, but by the way Michael presented it, this, he said this is a question he gives to his students. It's not that a student asked him this and then he answers it. That's like, fair enough. You've got to answer that. He actively poses the question to his students. Like, what the hell, bro? Oh, my word. Oh, my word. <clears throat> uh, but Augustine did have even stranger speculation about Adam, about Adam being able to have erections at will and people... <laughs> <laughs> Such control of the <laughs> Can you give me a citation of that, please? <laughs> oh my word! Okay, okay. Um, at least in this case, you're talking about mere mortal men, and so crass as it is, it's not blasphemy, and so there could be a, a more expansive variety of legitimate circumstances to address this question but my god augustine oh that horny mofo that horny boy my theory on christ sexuality is that he simply never activated he had perfect self-control as a prelapsarian man and could switch sexual desire on off and will very base precisely one of augustine's many gnostic hangovers <laughs> city of god oh man city of god 1424 for august i'm going to type that in right now just to City of God, 1424. All right, for later, for later. This is, so dumb. <laughs> this is why I love Dominic. Oh man, I'm loving him too. Uh, I'm loving, I'm loving you, Rabbit. <laughs> anyway, let's finish this off. All right, that's it. That's that's basically it. Yep. But yeah, that was, um, we are off to a banger. We are off to an absolute banger tonight. My word. And um, by the way, I don't know if I said it already, but it's not going to be a super long stream because again, really early start tomorrow. I've got to get up at 5 a.m. to catch the bus to get to work because I have a 7 a.m. start there. Um, and 5 a.m. because I've got to get ready and all that jazz. Um, or potentially, potentially a bit after because the bus is like right next door. So that's, that's pretty cool. 
But uh, yeah, next video. This one is on Michael Bird's channel, and um, <laughs> it, <laughs> I call I, I just nicknamed it the Simp Stream because when you just look at it, like before anything even happens, when you just look at the layout of <laughs> of people in that stream. <laughs> You, I'm, I'm just going to show it up. You, you're going to see why I call it the Sim Stream. <laughs> oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be good. All right, all right. The video, the return of Christian anti patri of the of the Christian anti patriarchy quad. <laughs> so you guys, you guys are going to love this. Where you just see like the opening frame. <laughs> Oh, and this is with the Birds of a Feather podcast, which he does with um, uh, Amy Bird. So, uh. hey. <laughs> just, just behold this sight. <laughs> oh, but just behold this in my word, my word. He has. He has like summoned the force, the four horsewomen of the fempocalypse. That's what this is. That is exactly what this is. This is like, this is like a lost manuscript of John's revelation. Oh my word. For real, the four horsewomen of the Fempocalypse. That's exactly what this is. It is it is an absolutely amazing sight. You just got to take it in. You, re you really, really do. I'm experiencing an estrogen hike just listening to the music. So true. That is actually so true. Okay, yeah, we see it. <laughs> Lots of minority boxes have been ticked. In well, not enough. Not enough because four out of five people are whites. And as we know, whites are bad. Whites are dirty. They're an inferior race. So... Uh, uh, minus for that. Um, otherwise, a bit of a bit of an up for the fact that four out of five of them are women. But again, intersectionality. Um, the experiences of white women are not the same as the experience of women of color. Um, and we have one woman of color, Debbie. Um, so that's unacceptable. And then, of course, we have the straight white Christian male priest scholar who's probably a, bit, a little bit well off. And so he's just like, with, with the exception of his... Um, with the exception of the fact that he accepts his privilege, um, he is he is negative one thousand points on the uh, on the privilege scale here. So uh, yeah, unfortunately, he he his presence alone kind of gets rid of all their minority points. But apart from that, hey, we got four women. <laughs> Poor little boy, tape cover. I wish I understood that reference. I can't see a male. Oh, I, I, I forgive you for not getting it, but uh, it's the it's the person in the middle. It's the them in the middle. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, I'm going to play this one. I only went a little bit into it, but there's a part like right near the start where like he attempts to have some humor and you're just going to, you guys are going to lose it with just like, that is the state of humor with this crowd. Like you're, you're going to see it as we, as we begin. And of course, this is like the anti-patriarchy thing, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to see some of that as well. It's going to, it's going to be really funny. And here we are, a Birds of a Feather <laughs> special episode. Once again, I have Amy Bird, of course, but I've also joined by a great gang of incredible ladies with Dr. Beth Allison Barr, Dr. Kristen Dumez, we've got Debbie Abraham. Oh, by the way, um, Beth Allison Barr, I'm absolutely demolishing her book uh, by the end of the month in a, in a systematic, thorough review because it is, it is actually a sight to behold of pseudo scholarship it is very bad so keep on the lookout for that end of the month by the way i forgot to do it thank you so much for my all my supporters i haven't updated the ken source patron autumn because we just had another supporter come in today shout out to chad homonym new episcopos love you man so much um but yeah all my supporters thank you so much you guys are absolute legends you make this possible um, you can, you are helping me slowly, but surely make this, turn this into a job. I have, a, I have my own actual side job by now. Thank God, like actual casual work. Um, but otherwise I do still intend to make this ministry a primary source of income one day. And you guys are helping me get there. And if anyone else would like to consider supporting me to help me make this into an income, 
go to the, to the subscribe star link down below, just in the ticker thing right there as well. You guys are absolute legends. And hello there, Samuel. Good to see you. Anyway, let us keep moving. Uh, these are all people with um, their own expertise in various things about Christianity, culture, and gender. Such intelligent women, guys. And it's great to be with you. Uh, the first thing I've got to ask, um, do all the men in your life have beards? Because that is the index for godliness according to Desiring God. Yeah. If anyone knows, there's a Desiring God article about the goodness of beards and that. And obviously... I could rant about how, like, oh, he's straw man in the article. They don't say that, but it's like, you know, they're just having a quip, so whatever. And they're and they're egalitarian, so you you got to you got to cut them some slack. Fairly representing their opposition is is not a, um, how would I say it? It's not a feature of their of their ideology. So there's that. Need to check this out later. I'm gonna have a fat sleep. Expose the cringe, brother. Thank you very much, Mitchy. Good to see. You. I don't think I've seen you here before. Good to see you. Uh, there's a, there's a few new people, somewhat new people here, given the time I'm streaming here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do these streams at this time more often. His voice sounds like someone doing an impression. <laughs> so true. So true. Right now, my husband's pretty godly. Then I guess, but I make him keep it kind of trim. You know. Yeah. She makes him keep it trimmed. Gentlemen, don't let your wife control your manhood. It's yours. It's your expression. Don't let her do that. Inshallah. But, yeah, I guess yeah. my I guess my husband's in a lot of trouble because he can't <laughs> he can grow a beard, but only in like certain parts. So he stays like right <laughs> here. He like he doesn't grow any hair at all, like right there. So yeah. you know, I don't know. That must be a character flaw. Chris Don, that sucks. I'm sorry, uh, sorry, Dr. Barr. Your uh, your husband's going to hell. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to say. And do you have a do you have a bearded husband? I, you you know, uh, I had a smooth faced husband for many years and coincidentally, just recently, he started growing a beard again, not a huge fan, but, uh, so yes, I have a, a properly masculine husband. Um, people might be surprised <laughs> to hear. Well, I mean, uh, the interesting fact for well, me, the fact that she's able to be doing, writing the book she's writing, doing the activist commentary that she is, um, clearly he's not an actually masculine husband. Let's, let's be real guys. Is I legally cannot grow a beard. Uh, because well, this this is true. Because every time I grow a beard, it's go. so lush and fulsome. It looks it looks like an admiral, and it's 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 so masculine and manly. Uh, my beard gets reported for committing heteronormative hate crimes. So uh, I. <laughs> <laughs> that is oh my word! That is humor to. <laughs> My beard gets reported for committing heteronormative hate crimes. <laughs> oh my word, that is. <laughs> oh my god, that's. <laughs> that. <laughs> Oh my word. Oh my word. That that was the worst joke I've heard in a long time. I've committed heteronormative hate crime. <laughs> That is special. That was, wow. Oh, mate, this cringe is a hate crime. Yeah, straight up. Not even a hate crime. It's a war crime. So, you know, an, an actual crime, a real crime. Oh, my word. I'd love to take uh, Dr. Bird and all the uh, the four horsewomen of the fem of the fempocalypse. I'd love to take them to The Hague for the, uh, the war crime that is their humor. Wait, do egalitarians get to joke like that? Thought crime, indeed, indeed. How they're, they're, I can't believe they're actually joking about that. They're, they're actually um, belittling the experience of people who do, um, who do get victimized by heteronormative hate crimes. It's not, it's not a laughing matter, guys. It, it really isn't. Well, for your ideology, it isn't. I can laugh about whatever. I can laugh about whatever. But you, you guys, no, no, no. Ya Jun Yuan, good to see you, mate. I thought Bird wasn't that bad. I only knew him through his biblical scholarship. Yeah, exactly. 
it's such an unfortunate thing because you can see scholars in their work and when you look at their scholarship, they can be great. They can be fantastic. And then when you see them as they are, as people, whether just in casual whatever and social commentary, they can be turn, they can turn out to be absolute cringe lords. Case in point, Michael Bird, um, which sucks because his commentary on Romans is cool. It's a, it's a decent one. A story of God Bible, a story of God uh, commentary series on Romans. So yeah. Oh well, let's keep going. Wow. I legally cannot grow a beard. It's just too, it's too masculine. And uh, yeah. too masculine. so to well, level the playing field, I've decided to go clean shaven. Uh, so that and also my everywhere. wife. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that, <laughs> that and my wife refuses to kiss me when I have a beard. But yes. that's, but mainly the legal issues, mainly the legal issues. But uh, what about you, was, Debbie? Yeah, my husband um, does not really have a beard. But I like him a lot better when he does have a beard. So oh, I think that says something about my godliness. <laughs> yeah. Put that out there as another angle. Yeah. Oh, I don't good. like beards. Yeah. It was it was a bizarre well, like article. You. It was weird. It was the yes, it's about like the oil, something about the oil. I mean, oh, that, anyway, Aaron, it was just... Aaron dripping off the. Oh, that, that, yes, that, yes, that yes. If people don't know what they're talking about, it was an article in. I'm, tr I'm trying, I'm trying to find it again. I don't know if it was Christianity Today or Christian Post. Um, where, where is the article? I'm trying, I'm trying to find it again. It's actually really, really, really annoying me um that i can't find it because they, they don't even link it here to it in the description of their video um uh, christian beards article I, I don't know uh desiring god that's it desiring god beards oh beard where art thou yeah and when you read it it's just like it's just it's just going through biblical example typology, the the symbology and the meaning and the significance of beards. Basically, stuff that for people with a hyper analytic liberal worldview, they don't get it because they don't think typologically. They, they don't have a meaningful worldview. By meaningful, I don't mean that they don't believe in God. They don't believe it's order of the universe. I mean that they don't have a worldview that truly tries to see the meaning in everything around them. They see so many things around them as just bare symbology, which is basically, and, and, and that bare symbology on its own is either useless um, or at worst, a distraction, which is more or less like a very light Gnostic worldview um, as much as they might not like it. And that undergirds um, very low church um, uh, worship and stripped down liturgy in that, that kind of worldview where where all the focus is just on the only real good thing is just activating that platonic good thoughts and feelings on, excuse me, with regards to religious worship and that, and not considering that God actually made us with five senses, all of which are utilized to um, come to knowledge and to, to understand reality, understand him. Uh, and that's why elaborate um, liturgy is a good thing. It can be abused, obviously. It can become empty especially if the, the actual content of the person's worship is rubbish or if they're living rubbish lives. But otherwise, it is a good thing. And so likewise, the Desiring God article, that's why they, that's why they don't understand. That's why they think it's so weird. Um, not saying everything in the article is totally, uh, totally perfect. I'm just, it's just, it's just generally, it makes good points. It, it really does. But that's why they don't understand it because they don't have a worldview that sees the meaningful, the meaningful, um, fulfillment of, of aesthetics and things in nature they see beards they very very likely see just beards as just an accident of nature god just kind of like oh i gave men beards because because reasons they don't see the, the true symbology and goodness in this stuff pog warriors good to see you right and real presence in the eucharist now nah, mate zwingli gang let's go zwingli gang 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 zwingli Someone. Yes. That's Psalm 116. Psalm 116. I think that was where that's where I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think I read the first half. couple lines. <laughs> yeah. Look, look, like look, look at that. These 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 scholar ladies. I read the first couple lines. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Okay. Awesome. It was really 
I kind of admired the writer, uh, apart from the point he was trying to make, which <laughs> was where he lost me. I mean, he was having a little fun too, I think, wasn't he? I mean, this was, you know, he had a little spark. Was it? Okay. And, no, I was serious. He went with it. It, was, it was honestly, yeah, I did try to read it to my husband who is not on Twitter and I was trying to explain to him and I just couldn't. So I got it out and started reading and I honestly, I couldn't breathe. I was laughing <laughs> so hard because you read through those lines of thought and you think this has, this would be, this is brilliant satire, but that's where we are right now. It, 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 right. It's our reality. Right. But it wasn't satire, which was what it was. Yeah, of course they, of course they, they treat it like that. Of course, they treat it like, oh, it's satire because um, here, here we are. We have a bunch of women um, trying to assert their expertise and their authority over things that are manly. Um, obviously, it's the, it, we don't need to point out the hypocrisy. They'll talk about how, oh, listen to, listen to women's voices, women this, women that, listen to our experiences, get women on boards and blah, 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 blah. But then when it comes to men's issues, it's like, oh, well, I'm just, eh, this, this man, this stuff about beards, oh, you're, you're so weird, you silly man writing about beards like that and, 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 and your experience i don't give a crap about your experience it's just it's just a weird article and uh it's not i can't believe it's not satire blah, blah, blah. and i'm just like woman shut up this is men's stuff beards i, I do not care about your ew that's disgusting i i think ew that's disgusting when i when i as a guy when i see chicks playing with barbie dolls or whatever but i also don't care because that's a chick's thing. Let the chicks do their, what, what they want. I'm a guy. I like my beards. And I'll gladly engage in beautiful, poetic discussion about beards and about their meaningfulness. And if you find that weird, oh, poor you. Just so funny. I just saw the headline and was like, why? It just seems, I don't know, maybe the guy woman. would um, you don't need to understand. want to take it down a couple notches, you know, and not no. make it so obvious, you know, that. No. That and John Piper kind of doesn't have a beard. I mean, yeah. it felt like something I would expect to read at CBMW, right? But yeah. also Biblical Manhood and Womanhood, that's kind of their shtick. It's like gender difference and we're going to, you know, just lean yeah, off. Kind of based? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, that, that's a good point. I was thinking, who, how many of them have beards of these guys? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, maybe it was an in-house. There's one group who want to say that they're more godly because they've got beards. So, so it's kind of an intrafactional. I think so. There are a yeah. lot of risks right now on those. Yeah, nothing to do with spaces. that. Yeah, yeah. This is this is another thing of the liberal, and I don't just mean liberal in terms of outright leftist, but the more basic liberal worldview, which many so-called conservatives also adopt, um, where especially in Christian contexts. When they see someone trying to argue from scripture, for example, that, hey, God made this particular thing, which certain people have and certain people don't, as a special symbol of something like maybe a special symbol of holiness or a special symbol of masculinity in this case. And then um, or, or, or marriage as a special as a genuinely special uh, reflection of Christ's relationship with the body of Christ, um, with his church that isn't reflected in that isn't reflected in being single. And they immediately interpret um, such statements that um, certain people have something which specially reflects something divine and good in a way that other people don't, they immediately interpret that as like, oh, oh so, you, so, 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 so is, is it bad, therefore, to, to, to not have that thing? Like, is it bad to be single now? Or is it bad to not have a beard? That's their immediate reaction because they don't have a, they don't have a concept of nuance, except when it except when it helps them. When it helps their worldview, they'll gladly go for nuance. Otherwise, for this, it, it just doesn't. <clears throat> It can be equally true that if a guy doesn't have a beard, well, it may depend on the motivation. Let's say, for example, a guy genuinely can't grow a beard. Okay, that's out of his control. That's fine. But otherwise, if a guy can grow a beard and he does grow it out, he is, with that, specially reflecting a special feature of masculinity that God did make for men. And the guy without the beard doesn't have that and doesn't do that special reflection in that one particular aspect. And that's fine. If there's people who say that, oh, how dare you, then they're, they're just retarded. But that's just the basic nuance. That's all we need to say. It's it's just ugh, this worldview it just drives drives me nuts every bloody time. <clears throat> it's the Theo dude bro look. Yeah, yes. I I know, I know. Mm. Well, anyway, let's turn to, to more serious topics beyond beyond um weirdos and beardos. Um <laughs> 
how is patriarchy faring in post-Trump Here we America? Go. In, in post-Trump America? How is patriarchy faring in post-Trump America? Is it resurgence? Is it in retreat? Is it resurgent baby? Inertia? What are people's thoughts and feelings? Resurgent baby. Let's go. Well, you know, it's people are recognizing that they're doing it and now they're saying it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really, yeah, that's where I've seen the turn. I, mean, I do patriarchy, indeed. I do patriarchy. Obvious of these. But now, instead of denying that um, that that they are doing patriarchy, now they're saying, she, yes, she the said the house, what, what the hell does that mean, doing patriarchy? I was doing that satirically, and she actually just said it unironically. What is doing patriarchy? I mean, it sounds unbelievably based. But uh, knowing, knowing what, like, Dr. Barr and Dumez and Bird, knowing what the, that kind of people have to say, they probably think doing patriarchy means like killing kittens and enslaving infant girls to cook in kitchens and all. That's probably what they think doing patriarchy means. So I, I'd love, I'd one hundred percent like say yo base, but I don't even know what they're talking about. What what does that mean? Doing patriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> doing patriarchy with the frick i need that on a shirt so true me too once i reopen the merch store on Redbubble, may, may, may actually make that <laughs> patriarchy is inevitable you either get our father in heaven or the father of lies that is a fantastic way of framing it. I've, I've seen that patriarchy is inevitable and because it's true but to frame it like that you either get our father in heaven or the father of lies that is damn true that is really damn true my wife enjoys patriarchy in our marriage. There you go. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Author Joel, you don't get it. You don't get it. Um, these these uh, these white women scholars here, plus one minority woman, um, they, they actually have better insight into your wife's uh, mindset and uh, state of mind uh, than you do. They know that she's uh, she's either internalized her misogyny or you have so severely um, beaten submission into her uh, psychologically that she just refuses to respond and she pretends she's happy. Um, these, these ladies would clearly know that hundred percent. <clears throat> I patriarch, thou patriarchist, he, she, it patriarchist. That's the, so good. That's so, we are so back boys. We are so back. <laughs> and this is the way it should be. And this is godly in every sense of the way. Um, and so it's been this, you know, this rhetoric shift. It's like, they can't deny it anymore. So now they're simply saying and anyone, anyone who was denying it, you're cringe laws. All right. Get with the times, get with the times. I mean that, that this is good, that they accept it. This is good. And everybody should be doing it, um, which is different from, you know, 2006, Russell Moore did that. But then I think it's mostly Based. been like, um, you know, it's a little bit of CBMW embracing it, but it so mostly good. has been sort of this complementarian that this isn't patriarchy. Um, this isn't the worldly patriarchy. And now yeah, that whole soft comp thing. Um, and not just uber soft comps, but generally it's a soft comp move to say, oh, we're not patriarchy because they immediately seed the egalitarian thing of just patriarchy is just bad. It's just anything that's bad with regard to gender issues, that's patriarchy. Rather than claiming the simple idea, the simple primordial idea of that word, father rule. That's what it is. That is good. We literally live in a patriarchy our universe is a patriarchy god the father that is what he is called in scripture throughout scripture that is objectively what he is he is our father therefore we live under a patriarchy so uh, yeah yep but yeah when the soft complementarians do all that stuff um of just like denying the term patriarchy. That's just so stupid. It's dumb. It's they seated, they seated ground. We need to take own that word patriarchy. Yeah, patriarchy is a good thing. And we should try to turn it back on them in in making egalitarianism or equality into cuss words like they did with patriarchy. Like, ooh, equality? That's disgusting. What's wrong with you? Ew. Are they thrown for a loop because uh they a bunch of people a bunch of people are embracing the word patriarchy and they don't know what to do? Pretty much. Yeah, that's pretty much. There's a bunch of people who are who are just not buying their framing of the world's of, of what's happening in the world. And so they're freaking out about it. <clears throat> How's your job so far? It's going really, really well. I uh, just did my first week last week and I love it. Absolutely love it. Just working in the warehouse right now. I'm just moving books to and from. Um, great, fantastic people there. Good friends. Um, decent break times as well. Um, and we're right in the middle of the of the town. So like we've got, we've got Woolies or Woolworths, our main grocery area. 
got a gigaton of Korean fried chicken around there. I've got bakeries right next to the train station. That's my main way of actually getting there. And so it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic job. Love it. Love it to death. Um, but tomorrow is my first day of starting at the real start time, which is 7 a.m. I was normally starting at 9 a.m., which meant I got up, which meant I got up at 7. Um, which, oh, well, okay. No, I normally got up around 6 something just to be like super early, but I didn't need to. I had like an hour wait. Um, but now I have to get up at around five for the start time tomorrow, which is bruh nuts. But uh, hey, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's worth it because uh, super early start and early finish. So yeah, yeah. Hey, you still have Woolworths? Yeah, we do. Uh, I don't know if you'll. I don't know if we're thinking about the same one because I know there's Woolworths. There's a South African Woolworths that's like a clothing shop or something like that. Um, but if you actually had a grocery place called Woolworths, that's that's actually pretty sick. Love me some chicken. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't really like Korean fried chicken myself, which sucks because there's so much of it around the area. Um, but oh, well, what can you do? They're like, yeah, of course it is. And it's good. So mm -hmm. it's perfectly natural. One class of people rules over yeah. another class of people. It's, ro exactly. ro it's rooted in. Oh, no. Real life since the dawn of mankind. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Actually, you know, you know what's really funny? I mean, what does scripture itself say? That we will reign with Christ over, um, we will judge angels in that, for example. Isn't that a class of people, Christians, reigning over uh, spirits, basically? And I guess, in a sense, the reprobate, the damned, because like we're up in heaven, we're ruling with Christ, and they're like submitted in the hellfire. <laughs> so, I mean, come on, mate, come on. <laughs> nature, yeah. Exactly. Yes, nature. Yeah. A lot of okay. the natural theology arguments. I was shocked to see because like, you know, one account on Twitter, gang. Um, it's good to be a man. Um, you yes. know, I, I thought at first this is so fringe, you know, I mean, really cringeworthy patriarchy being promoted on there. <laughs> and you, Oh my word, she's actually mentioned it. She's mentioned it here. Oh my word. <laughs> Oh, and that's just so rich of Amy Bird calling it's good to be a man cringeworthy. That is that is so rich. That is unbelievably rich. Because quite literally, they they do they do do arguments, they have done um argument stuff about egalitarianism and that, but fundamentally, unlike most other people on that who address these issues, they're they're focused almost entirely, especially now, just on the practical outworking of it, of teaching men what it means to be a man and how to be a good man. That's pretty much what it is. And she finds what they say is cringe. Um, and, and frankly, that's just because she's teaching men uh, not to be simps for the, uh, for the white dominatrixes out there. And so, um, so of course she finds that cringe because uh, she's going to be deprived of, uh, of servants one day um, to put it to be a little bit hyperbolically, but that's fundamentally what it is. She's scared about what, um, what, what, Christian men patriarchy will do. Um, she's an egalitarian. She she just but she she fundamentally they, they may deny this, but fundamentally what they believe uh, the biological differences between men and women they're just accidents in nature basically. Just God God was just like oh why did he do that eh, just just cause just cause um, yeah <clears throat> weird gnostic undertones nature being evil and natural structures being oppressive exactly that's exactly what this is. Don't you get it? 20th century anti-theists have better ideas for society than the word made flesh and his elect authors. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, so true. I think she's talking about natural law. Egalitarianism is against natural law. That's it. That's it. 100%. 100%. He wrote a book called It's Good to Be a Man. Okay, so she was initially talking about the blog because the blog came first and I followed it since near its beginning. So like I was like into it before it was cool and all that um, by non-tenant and Pastor Michael Foster. Awesome, guys. I'm I personally know non awesome, great, great dude. Um, but yes, yeah, so they had a blog for a while. <clears throat> I even actually posted an article on their blog. I actually contributed once to the, to the blog. Um, you can look it up uh, on it's good to be a man and find uh, Genesis three fifteen is patriarchy a curse of the floor. I basically debunk like um, arguably the only uh, persuasive text that egalitarians have uh, Genesis 3.15 and I show how it still doesn't show egalitarianism. So good article. It was originally posted on my on my older blog, but it was um, edited and then put up on It's Good to Be a Man. So check that out if you guys want. Um, but yeah, 
Anyway, she's uh, she's having an event about them. And the reason why she's having an event, I, I, I believe the reason why she's having an event about them right now is because they got her really good. And I'll explain, I'll explain why in a second, um, unless she herself does it. And uh, Canon Press, you know, Douglas Wilson's uh, publishing arm mm -hmm. um, published it. And, <clears throat> you know, I look up bad books sometimes and I hadn't looked that one up, but it's been out for a while. But I was looking up another bad book. Topped and up the so charts. Amazon recommended me other books that I might like. Oh. And that one was there. And it said number one bestseller in, and it was something like um, male discipleship. That wasn't what it was, but it was like a, you know. I think it was basic, Presbyterianism. Oh, no, it was Presbyterian. Yeah, yeah there you <laughs> it go. It was the number one bestseller in Presbyterian book. And oh, yeah. Like, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What? I mean, so. You know, so many wins, boys. People say to me. Put a that, win in the chat. Put a W in the chat, boys. Uh, Amy, these Menacing. people are just fringe, you know. Mm, they're not, yeah. There's a lot of people buying that book. Yeah. And then you and so then about I it. said something. Yeah, I said something about it on Twitter. Every mm -hmm. anonymous account comes after me. And then Douglas Wilson, oh. like Canon Press. Yeah, every anonymous account. Yeah, my ass. My ass. Check out the Twitter. Yeah, you'll find Anon accounts. There's Anon accounts on every post that gets significant traction. But there's also a lot of real people with real faces who replied to her tweet, including me. I got actually a pretty highly liked comment. And yes, my name is a pseudonym, the other Paul, and my profile picture is an icon of Paul. But my real name, Paul Facey, and my face is out there, very easy to find. So yeah, plenty of real people too. <laughs> w W fat W W patriarchy pillar. Let's so good. Let's so good, boys. So yeah, she's talking about a time when she got ratioed so hard, and it, like the most classy troll ever. Because like Canon Press and those guys base patriarchy bros, but they're they're not in it for like like getting dirty in the mud that kind of trolling. But they did an absolutely masterful troll, and and I think I think she'll probably mention it now. The twenty percent discount if you put bird. <laughs> Heard something. Yeah, and then we go and back. The anonymous count comes after me. And then Douglas Wilson's, yeah. like Canon Press, gave a 20% discount <laughs> if you put bird, bird something in the discount code. So I then the bunch that. of them sold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, thank you to Amy Bird for helping me sell more of my book and giving it a discount. That's unbelievable. Uh, uh, I've got to give it to Bird. She's taking it really well. Um, I don't know if she's like hiding some real seethe inside or something, but she honestly almost looked like she's having a, she's almost looked like she's like, all right, I had that coming up. Oh, you, you, whatever you guys take it. So I'm just like, okay, there's some, there's some respect to bird for uh, not like absolutely losing it. <laughs> but yeah, that's as she, it happened exactly as she said, except for the whole anonymous accounts thing. Um, she posted, <clears throat> she shared a screenshot of it being one number one bestseller in Presbyterian category on Amazon. And she's like, people are saying that these guys are cringe, but they're not fringe and all that. Um, they're real. There's a lot of them out there. And a lot of people, including myself, commented, oh, wow, thank you so much for telling us about this book. I'm going to go buy it now. And then Canon Press, <laughs> Canon Press shared her, re her tweet and said, um, as she said, uh, if you type in the code bird and they, and they just did such a troll. They didn't even do it. I don't think they even spelled a name. I think they spelled her name like deliberately B I R D not B Y R D. Um, <laughs> actually, I don't know if they did either way discount code bird and you get 20% off the book, <laughs> which is absolute masterful troll. She, she single-handedly pumped sales for, for that book. And uh, I'd be I'd be totally understand I'd be totally understanding if she was seething about that inside because like she she literally boosted her enemy's revenue and reach. It's it's absolute. <laughs> it was such a funny time. You can find it. You know I'm gonna find it on Twitter myself. Um, Twitter Amy Bird. It's good to be a man. Fringe. <clears throat> Yep, yep, here it is. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna share it briefly. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna share this screen just uh, just uh, just briefly. Um on uh, Twitter. Hang on, do I have anything else up? Let's close chats and I'll open up the tweet. So this is the tweet. <laughs> and, and and the way they played it, because it almost does sound like totally out of context totally out of context if you didn't know who amy bird was 
you could almost interpret this as as an endorsement as well. You could interpret this as, do you know what Amazon number one bestseller in Presbyterian Christianity is right now? All of you who keep saying there's this fringe few need to wake up. That almost sounds like a slightly aggressive, but otherwise an endorsement if you didn't know who the heck Amy Bird was. That's what makes this so much more infinitely funnier. And 577 likes. Um, here's a good review of It's Good to Be a Man and is absolutely trash, genuinely trash. And here I am. So stoked for this endorsement. Massive thanks for reminding me to purchase the physical edition and promote it to my audience, which I will be doing, by the way, people, once the book arrives, which it's taking its time, not going to lie, but it's from America, whatever. Once it does arrive, I'm going to do a special dedicated stream to it, review it, and then if it's as I remember it, because I actually got, um, because I know non-tenant personally, I actually, got, I actually got to look at an early manuscript of this, which is pretty cool. I didn't go through the whole thing, but it was good from what I saw. Um, and so I presume I'll be promoting it once I, uh, once I get it. And perhaps if he has time, even I have a chat with, uh, have a chat with non on the channel. Um, but yeah, you can, <clears throat> you can see, uh, you can see tweets here as well. Um, you got, you know, you got your usual simps, <laughs> he, him, classic Montclair Presbyterian church pastor. Oh my word. He, him. Apparently by Presbyterian, Amazon doesn't mean the Presbyterian church. You would say we're the largest Presbyterian body of the deepest historical roots, but whatever. Yeah. And the Roman Catholic church is the largest Christian church in the world. Oh yeah. Yeah. So Christian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. PCUSA is Presbyterian. TEC is Anglican. Roman is Catholic. Tweet again once, uh, tweet again once black isn't white and the sky is no longer for <laughs> for you. <laughs> Jacob Watson, you absolute legend. Good reply. Very good reply. <clears throat> Uh, and then here's where the good tweets are. Thank you, Amy. Very cool. Clicks add to cart. <laughs> Tyler Cox is one of the most practical and effective books I've read on the subject. Almost every aspect of my life saw immediately improvement after applying the book. Chapter on mission is worth the price. Highly recommend it for the chapter alone. Thanks at This Is Foster, Pastor Michael Foster. And I have to agree as well, because the book is very largely just based on stuff they put on their blog. And binging their blog and podcast myself, it genuinely did help me, especially in issues of perspective or what it means to be a man, biblical perspective and the right framing, the right worldview and all that. It immensely helped me and gave me some, it gave me solid, necessary groundwork for improving myself to where I am today. It took a long while for it to really go well. I had a lot of ups and downs, lots of downs and lots of failures, but it gave the foundations that allowed me to do my level of improvement that I've reached today. So massive thanks to those guys. Massive thanks. Um, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so yeah, lots of it. It's an excellent book. Come and see. It. Oh man, great stuff. Great stuff. <laughs> it's such a classic. Um, but yeah, it, it, it really, it really is fantastic. <clears throat> Any normal person who likes working and providing for their family should use an anonymous account. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. That's true. I, I'm personally of the uh, come and come and get me attitude. But yeah, <clears throat> should I watch this stream? Hmm, I've done a lot of procrastinating today watch it buddy <laughs> any normal person choose an anonymous account very true well except me i'm a public ministry guy pc usa equals politically correct usa very true they are regime theologians so they don't have to worry about an anon account very true indeed people trying to trade on their name are not normal what are you trying to say about me mate <laughs> oh man anyway anyway let's get back to <clears throat> the absolute shite show that is this stream. I'll just go back uh, five seconds. Because it looks like <laughs> perfect stop on birds. I feel like Michael Bird, you can stop it on almost any frame and it'll be some variant of the soy jack. Like my word, this is this is funny. If someone could do me a mad favor and just screen cap this right now with Michael Bird's face, um, get screen cap it and just crop out Michael Bird's face and make that into an a make that into a, like a PNG emoji, but also whether it's the same person or a different person, make a just a pure black and white outline, like with those um, those variant soy jacks. Um, you know, like the guys who are like like that, and someone made it into like a, just a black and white outline that you can put in memes. Um, if someone could do that as well, along with a, a PNG emoji for the Discord, that would be so epic. Anyway, let's keep going. So I then a bunch that. of salt. Yeah. <laughs> And they're like, thank you to Amy Bird for helping me sell more of my book and giving it a discount. So true. That is, that's so unbelievable. People are just full of love. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I mean, yeah, it, I think people, that, you know, there's mm. that many. Well, and it wasn't just, right, I mean, book sales, right? That's kind of 
all fair and love and war in that front. Um, <laughs> we all benefit from these little skirmishes. <laughs> yes, uh, you know, that's, true. that's true. That's true. Hey, you know, hey, mad respect. They they acknowledge that hey, it's skirmishes that happens. Mad respect. I, I saw some of the the comments on um on your your twitter feed yeah. and i saw that kind of and and amy draws this more than mm -hmm. uh beth or i do yes and you know, we could discuss reasons for this but it really is shocking <sighs> and what what bothers me most isn't these anon accounts honestly um it's it's all of the other guys who are yep. egging them on who are standing mm -hmm. by who ha actually have um some standing in those mm -hmm. spaces and uh, to me that is um they're more culpable here as far as i'm concerned wait, 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 wait. standing by not doing anything culpable for what culpable for joking on bird's twitter account saying thanks for recommending the book i'm gonna buy it now Cul what what <laughs> i mean this is coming from the people who actually believe in hate crimes so I mean, I, I shouldn't be surprised, but it just it just surprised me every time. You actually believe culpable for what? What sin did they commit? Like even Bird herself, she I mean, I, it was a while ago, I guess. So maybe she was like absolutely seething when it first happened, which wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, if she had, if she's really sticks by her principles, she should be seething. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, culpable. Oh, shiver me timbers. <laughs> I'm having to lift at the moment to counteract all the soy emanating from that footage. That's a good idea. That's a very good idea. Got to get back to work. We'll catch the rest of this later. Have a good one. Likewise, Isaac Shirk. Have a good one, mate. Come on, Paul. It's the 21st century. Silence is violence, don't you know? Well, if that's the case, when I was an introvert back in the day, I was an absolute mass serial killer. <laughs> I was that silent, boys. <laughs> this sounds like middle-class white mothers getting upset over nothing. That's that's literally what this is. I don't know how many of these are even... Are any of them? Oh, I think... How many of these are the mothers? I'm not sure. I think they're all married. Maybe they are mothers. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> but yeah, you have to lift to the emanator. The cool thing with being Lebanese is that I can just absorb all the estrogen and then just crap it out when I go to the toilet. That's just that's just me. That's just my nature. Um, yeah. God gives some certain gifts. And, uh, hey, I'm not complaining. Not complaining little patience for that. And I watched that play out and I was actually really angry on your behalf. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That is what's, what's more disgusting about it all. Isn't it? Disgusting. Like the oh, disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> oh, they said in a joking manner, thank you for recommending the book. I'm going to buy disgusting, disgusting white males. <laughs> True, Jimmy. True. <laughs> man. Oh, man. People who can do something. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and so they kind of, you know, keep the safe distance, keep their hands clean, mm -hmm. but are are really able to. And I'm just thinking, are, are they hitting click and buying the book? Too? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, absolutely. Oh, I did. Is that what they're oh, I did. That's what their belief system is then. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that actually patriarchy is doing just fine right now. It's having yeah. a resurgence um, because it's um, it's hard to know how widespread, but just the uh, uh, kind of qualitative. I butchered that. Uh, it's it's being embraced by these reactionary elements, <clears throat> and so and that's that. And that's that's another framing thing. Are there reactionaries? Yeah, sure, but there's also a lot of significant guys who aren't just reacting they're actually trying to build something up from the ground up perfect example batavia ohio pastor michael foster um east river church they just had their next their recent uh, county before country conference which is brilliant it's all about localism where don't try to focus so much on the national issues and let that distract you focus on your local community so it's an absolutely brilliant concept and they're doing amazingly their groundwork they're not they're not even reactionary they they react to cringe takes like this that's not a reactionary. They're actually real people doing real work, grassroots stuff, and that's a separate community from um, from Moscow, I, uh, from Moscow, Idaho, by the way, which has been doing exactly that, but for decades now, and they're going strong. They're going very, very strong. They're actually they're they're actually <laughs> targeted in many ways by their local Democrat leadership because they know what they're capable of. Um, so no, it's not just reactionaries. This is actually all very centered around really, really grassroots movements and communities. First world issues and sensitivities, they should worry about brethren in third world countries. Eh, yeah, I, I personally don't like that quip myself, you know. Um, 
I just simply say, look, get a grip. Know what the real problems are in our areas. The real problems in our areas, among um, among a million things, state tyranny, sexual degeneracy, um, the destruction of the Christian faith in our area, and the first thing and their biggest their biggest problem, their biggest priorities here um, are a tiny non-existent handful of women who may be genuinely adversely affected by abortion laws and bad guys saying mean things. That's basically their attitude here. That's basically it. Um, totally off priorities because of their ideology. <clears throat> In some ways, dangerous, right? Because it's more extreme versions. It's not being tempered with, oh, but this is, it's really, you know, it's, it's, we're caring for each other and this isn't patriarchy, right. this isn't power. And I was like, hell yeah. Yeah, that's horse crap. That's absolute horse crap. As I, as I said, again, they're building actual communities. They are building actual Christian church communities that are actually exemplifying what it means to be a church, not just some place you gather on Sunday and then in their case probably talk about social justice issues and then just piss off back to whatever secular life they have. It's an, they actually establish permanent, thriving Christian communities that is church day in, day out, not just Sunday service, but consistent, living, doing real things. And then, of course, there's the crap dichotomy she brings up again about, oh, it's about caring and loving, not about power and authority. That is a bullcrap dichotomy, bullcrap. The existence of God disproves that. He is love itself. He is the essence of love, and he expresses and shows that for us. He is also the absolute sovereign of the entire bloody universe, and he smites his enemies. ¿Por qué no los dos? ¿Por qué no los dos? My word. And this reflects in um, humanist institutions that he establishes, like the state, for example, a legitimate institution, like the father, which is a legitimate institution that is supposed to rule his household and love it. It's not an either or between caring and power and authority. That's freaking retarded. It, and it's genuinely retarded and dishonest because they believe in power and authority. They believe in using and wielding in power and authority just for things that they like. Like, for example, daddy state. Um, I'm going to go out on a leg. I don't know them personally, but I highly, highly, highly suspect that these ladies and, and Bird himself were probably all for, at least to a certain extent, um, government power over the church regarding um, unvaccinated people entering into the church. I'm sure I'm, I'm very key. I'm not going to actually make a formal accusation, but I highly suspect that they, they would be for that. Highly, highly suspect that because it's rooted from the exact same ideology. And once you know a person's ideology, you can often almost to a T predict what they believe in certain issues without actually asking them. Um, yeah. Women and their new male adjacents can't understand that exceptions don't disprove rules. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the egalitarian argument as a whole. It's like, oh, look, a woman did something. Therefore, women passes. Oh, look, Phoebe breathed. And therefore, women passes. Oh, look, Deborah was important. Holder was significant. Oh, women passes. Absolute bull. Absolute bull. Yes, Paul, you're right. I meant their imaginary enemies are only real in third world countries where our brethren suffer persecution. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's that's 100% right. And um, as Evan said, as my man Evan here said earlier, um, patriarchy is inevitable. You'll either get God, our father, or the father of lies. You'll either get good, loving, strong fathers, exactly as God wants, or you'll get terrifying evil men. Either way, you're going to get men. That's just how God created it. If patriarchy, why female servants, lol, what? <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, yeah. you know, where does that lead? And um, and what is this going to look like? And then also who then become their ally? And that's where you see these really interesting relationships forged between conservative evangelicals, conservative Christians, and secular conservatives around, you know, the Jordan Peterson types. That yeah, that's 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 bull. Okay, that's that's bull. Notice this is a tactic that these kind of liberal types will do very often. They try to very precisely and analytically dissect like um, alliances between certain groups of their opposition, like conservatives. In order to in order to very strongly imply that it's just about pit political power maneuvering, and so in this case, for example, she talk about all of these traditionalist guys there. They're teaming up with secularists like Pete, Jordan Peterson, as if to give off the idea that this is just political power maneuvering and all that, rather than 
um, the simple idea that they actually genuinely believe in what they're doing and they may be willing to ally with um, secular at certain points. We just, that's partially true, partially, very slightly. There are um, some of like this general patriarchy based Christian can impress whatever group who will say, hey, yeah, we can we can we can work with um, non Christian guys in so far as we have the same goals. Michael Foster did exactly that. He went to um he went to a conference like last year, I think Alpha something. I'm not sure, but it was basically a conference all about about men, how to be men, how to be strong men, and it was a secular conference. There were there were Christians there, but there was also unbelievers. There were Mormons and all that. Uh, and he was one of their keynote speakers, and he just boldly, even though there was a good contingent of unbelievers in the audience, just preached the gospel alongside his stuff about about men, and people loved it. They genuinely loved it. <clears throat> and he had he talked with. Um, I remember him mentioning there was, a, there was uh, I think the main host himself is an unbeliever and agnostic. Um, there was a Mormon uh, speaker. There was an Eastern Orthodox guy, and they're all just chatting. They're all great. They're all guys because they they they, they have a temporary kind of alliance. Um, because of a common threat we have. And that's perfectly legitimate to do. Um, but otherwise, <clears throat> plenty of us in the same sphere are saying, don't treat these unbelievers as like your mentors. Like Jordan Peterson, plenty of us in the patriarchy sphere, um, have I, I have myself because I just don't really care a whole ton. But plenty of us have been saying, guys, just calm down with Jordan Peterson. Okay, He's an unbeliever. He's still a, a liberal. So his utility is very limited. Just don't don't rely on him. So it's actually the exact opposite. It's actually the exact opposite. This is an extension of the leftist guilt by association trip. Exactly, exactly. That's exactly what this is. Um, so yeah, it's just simple two responses. Um, one, uh, a lot of us do not like associations with Jordan Peterson. And two, for those who do in a limited capacity associate with people like him. Okay, so what? Boo-hoo, get over it. Uh, um yeah, you know, some of them are Andrew Tate. I mean, that's really big right <clears throat> now. Oh my god! Okay, the Christian patriarch guys are not associating with Andrew Tate. That's bull. That is actual bull. Tate, he he's he's like one of those pseudo based influences where like he just says inflammatory stuff. And hey, there's there's some elements of truth in what he says, but otherwise he just says it for for shits and giggles, basically for just just causing a stir, pretty much. And he also has some retarded takes. And I do not know anyone, any any figure of any significant stock in like the Christian Protestant patriarchy circles online who are saying, hey, Andrew Tate is great. Let's go with him. That's that's bull. In fact, I think I might have seen something by 80, 80 I don't know if it was 80 Robles. I don't know if it was him. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. No, no one's going for Andrew Tate in that. That's just that's just retarded. I hate to even whoa, mention whoa, whoa, whoa. him. So what's yeah. what's an Andrew Kate? Tate. <laughs> Tate. You had, didn't follow was, that story? Yeah, I was just about to bring him up. So he's a former yeah, kick, yeah, he's, he's a former kickboxer that was in the Big Brother house. And on, I think I think Demez said someone mentioned Tate. Who who mentioned Christians and secular conservatives around you know the Jordan Peterson types mm. that um you know, some of them are Andrew Tate. Elements. I mean, that's really big right Andrew now. Andrew Tate. I hate to even whoa, mention whoa, whoa, whoa. him. So he being Jordan Peterson, I assume, maybe. I assume. I might know what she's talking about because. <clears throat> oh, no, no, no. I do know what she's talking about. I think. I think Peterson mentioned. Sorry. I think Peterson. Oh, I think I'm about to be a bit more quiet. I think Peterson mentioned something about how, like, oh, people are flocking to Andrew Tate because, or guys are flocking to Andrew Tate because. He's saying he's saying some basic but true stuff about guyhood and all that stuff, which is like true. He has a lot of retarded takes and is just a retarded personality. Um, but otherwise, yeah, he's saying a lot of just base level stuff, which the Christian patriarchy guys have said for a while and in a far superior manner. I think that's what she mentioned. I think that's I think that's what she meant with Jordan Peterson saying that. Yeah, he has mentioned it. Um but uh okay, so yeah, she so she didn't try to draw an association between the Christian patriarchy guys and, and Andrew Tate. Okay, whoo, good, because that would have been retarded if she did that. So what's what's an Andrew Kate? Tate. <laughs> Tate. You had didn't follow was, that story? Yeah, I was just about to bring him up. So he's a former yeah, daddy, kick, yeah, he's a former kickboxer that was in the Big Brother house in uh, in the UK. He's in British um American-ish now. Mm -hmm. Debbie seems to have a pretty tight biographical knowledge of Andrew Tate. No comment. 
Um, so 2016, he got kicked out of Big Brother, I think. But basically, he started a his own sort of social media program, like Sexy Hustlers University. And then to get people to uh, an affiliate code and discounts on Hustlers University, he had them basically. Oh, yeah, that's on, cringe. Uh, TikTok, Instagram. Hustlers whatnot, University um, is so with cringe. His clips, and his clips are very, very misogynistic. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're targeted to young boys, young men, <laughs> but young teenage boys in particular. So I don't really want to repeat actually what I've heard that he has said. Yeah. I'm not you know, interested in you know furthering that, but it's horrible, like really violent, horrible red pill and, language. And, yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. And, and to an extent, because some of the red pill stuff is, is cringe. The 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 word that they used is this idea of the manosphere that there's always oh, yeah. somebody who comes along that basically is able to find a way to appeal to younger men. Obviously, you mentioned Jordan Peterson; that would have been the last sort of big one, and I think. To your question, Mike, about like post Trump era, I think we live in a time when uh, when the idea of the grieved man is accepted in secular culture now. Too. Mm. Whereas I think, you know, while that heart comes along and evangelicals can say yes, you know, like. Oi, no way. We've got Dr. Bird in the chat. Respect. Good to see you here. Paul, mate, I don't mind the critique, but you've got to stop using the phrase retarded. It's kind of, it's unkind to parents with kids with a mental handicap. Um, I don't think so. No, it's not. It's a common cross, granted, It's a, but it's a common nonetheless phrase for, uh, how would I say it, for stupid stuff. And I use it that way. That's normal. I know people personally with handicaps. They don't really care about this stuff. And if others do, then I'm sorry, but I can't exactly be uh, expected to cater to everybody. <laughs> yeah, unexpected. Yes way. I forgot what I said in respect to that. Bird in the chat. I know. Indeed. Very weird. Very weird. <laughs> Did not expect that. All right. Cool. Let's keep going. Men have been only have, and it's I'm kind of an evangelical I thing. I think maybe. what's different now is that secular culture is really embraces the idea as well. But Andrew Tate is terrible. Okay. Well, I did. I, did. I, I mean, my son, you know, he's been talking about him like crazy lately. Um, and he said that it's catching on, you know, in the high school mm -hmm. and stuff. And it's just really sad and sick. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I mean, women are being viewed this way. Yeah. Right. Something I found out yesterday about Jordan Peterson that fascinates me is that his wife kind of has a conversion experience, and his daughter. So his wife and his daughter have their own youth, um, social media presence. And I think this is kind of going into like more mancillary kind of stuff. So I think I might leave this one here. And there was one more I wanted to look at tonight. I don't know if I'll re watch the whole thing, but basically his latest one. <clears throat> in response to an article by Kevin DeYoung about whether patriarchy is good for churches and all that jazz. So uh, yeah, very interesting that Dr. Bird has come into the chat at this very time. <clears throat> so let's see how this goes. Um, going to be very interesting. Yeah, that's true. Dr. Bird, stop the cringe, please. Hi, it's Mike Bird here making another somewhat impromptu video about church, gender, and culture. Uh, and once again, uh, critiquing something put out by the Reverend Dr. Kevin DeYoung. Uh, some people might know that he wrote a, a fairly uh, strong, almost scathing critique of Beth Allison Barr's book, The Making of Biblical Womanhood. Uh, I Very well deserved. I'll be making such a, for, if, if, uh, for anyone else who's new in the chat, including Dr. Bird himself, I'll be making a... Uh, somewhat equally probably if not more scathing critique of that book myself because it makes some absolutely shocking shocking claims in terms of history and theology it's like it, it's bad it's really bad so that's coming at the end of the month felt some of his criticisms were quite unfair uh, and and even in a sense uh you know belittling her experience of having of having been um traumatized by an, an abusive uh, boyfriend in in the past i thought that was you know grossly unfair uh, and Kevin DeYoung has added again. He's written a, a new article. Can't comment how, um, I think it's been a while since I read DeYoung's critique on that. Can't comment on how he treats uh, Dr. Barr's experience, but I can personally say from reading it, she uses it. If it's if it's true and all that stuff, not challenging that at all. And that sucks that she experienced what she did. And yet using it in such a manner as she does in order to basically, basically guilt the reader into accepting her theology. That's functionally what it's doing. Um, and it's, that's just that's just wrong. That's just bad. It's disgusting. And more importantly, well, equally as important <clears throat> is how she basically 
there's a key quote. I forgot exactly where it is, but basically um, for her complementarianism and her abuse are one and one. It is like, it is a one-to-one relationship. And so for her, she basically admits that she is not going to give a complementarian theology a fair reading unless she, um, and the only alternative would be either would be basically to accept that it's true theologically, but then just reject the Christian faith because it fundamentally created her abuse. Um, I forgot the exact quotes with it, but functionally what she said, and it, it just blows the lid off the whole of the whole book. Uh, about patriarchy, why patriarchy is a good thing and complementarianism should be nested in patriarchy. He's written over that, written on that at the Desiring God website. Uh, now, I do not have a weird fixation on uh, Kevin DeYoung, uh, but he is one of the authors who writes on the topic of complementarianism uh, with some frequency. And I think he offers one of the more stronger or extreme <clears throat> views of complementarianism that can be found. Extreme. In- Love that language. Extreme. Extreme. Uh- <clears throat> so cringe. So cringe. American evangelical context. Now, complementarianism is a spectrum. Uh, there are Unfortunately, ways yes. of being complementarian, uh, and there'll be different restrictions, different exhortations, different way of uh, interpreting scripture and applying it in complementarian circles. And Kevin DeYoung is is offering one, which I think potentially goes into an unhealthy direction. And I'm also concerned about its theological and biblical validity and that kind of a thing. And I wanted to to engage his view somewhat critically uh, because I know this is the sort of material that people do read, uh, not just in America, but also in the rest of the I think a fair bit of this is just kind of prolegomena. I'm concerned that this particular article negative influence on some very impressionable Mm, men and women uh, training for ministry thinking argues that complementarianism is fine by itself, but it needs to be anchored in patriarchy. That's the basic nutshell of it. <clears throat> that's Kevin that's true. His, his because that, that's, that's uh, actually true. And he can, to have a consistent complementarian argument is to affirm patriarchy because even to an extent, soft comp- even soft complementarianism has to affirm at least a very basic concept of father rule, that there is a primacy of the rule of a father. <clears throat> And uh, as as weak and qualified as they make it um, to a very cringe and unbiblical extent, frankly, um, yeah. So, and if in case in case Doctor Bird, in case you're still watching, in case you don't know, I am very much on the. So you got the narrow complementarian, broad complementarian. I'm that's me. That's me. <laughs> I'll gladly call myself. I don't even use complementarian very often these days at all. Um, I'll mostly just say like I'm. I support. Biblical patriarchy, patriarchalism, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so, uh, one second, people. Anyway, I'm going to have to get through this quick because I do not have a lot more time. Um, extremely early start to work tomorrow. He rejects an abusive and malicious patriarchy. Uh, he doesn't believe in a type of patriarchy that's going to result in domestic violence, sexual abuse, sexual harassment. And I think he's sincere in that claim. I think he's sincere. He does not want to see these things happen. And I I have no doubt if he he saw them, he would far more than likely uh, speak against them and oppose them. But I think he's a little bit misguided or naive if he thinks that patriarchy can be truly disarmed of its more sinister aspects. And we know that because of experience. You know, we have the receipts where you have certain types of patriarchal culture you get certain types of behavior towards women. The other preliminary thing. And this is the, oh man, this really sums up, um, just right off the bat, really sums up the blatant double standards, unequal weights and measures that egalitarians will have on this issue with regards to complementarianism, patriarchy, abuse, all that jazz. They'll employ fallacies of like, in a nutshell, obviously they'll try to be more nuanced than that, but functionally what they're going to try and say is, look, there's bad things that happen to women under a system that can be brought under the very broad category of patriarchy. And then maybe there's like a couple other mysterious steps, but it eventually gets the therefore patriarchy bad. 
which is very silly once you consider virtually any other category, like government, for example. I could very easily say exactly if if we're if I'm talking to an anarchist, for example, or about anarchists, I could say, look, if uh, if if Dr. Bird wants to disarm government of its uh, negative con of its bad connotations, the word government of its negative connotations, uh, it's very naive uh, because of the research and basic historical knowledge, basically, of bad things that governments have done with their power that were only possible because they had power. And of course, I think Dr. Bird would have to force himself to say, well, that's actually not a legitimate inference because our own scriptures explicitly affirm the legitimacy of the state as an instrument of God's um, justice. <clears throat> and so you, you can't make that inference. But And so he would um, rightly try to figure out the nuances of, okay, people can abuse government. That doesn't therefore make the thing itself bad and um to make that argument would ignore how government every single day does good for us and without it there would be utter chaos and all we need to do is simply say look dr bird apply the same standards for patriarchy consider that something coming under the banner of patriarchy um isn't somehow isn't even close to a little bit of evidence against a biblical patriarchy view it's it's simply not um, and the other major double standard <clears throat> is how I am yet to ever really see egalitarians try to actually do a fair comparison, not just, oh, look, we found these studies and how there's these cultures that can be brought under the vague major banner of patriarchy, which is actually, which uh, to kind of bring it back a little bit, that's actually part of the problem. The fact that they treat patriarchy as a very broad concept that does, that would include um, genuinely evil and ungodly structures. Whereas Christians are not promoting just a bland patriarchy and just fill it in with whatever godless uh, details you want. We are pushing biblical patriarchy, which necessarily includes the responsibility to love and care your wife. Um, and so if we were to say, if we were to say um, to egalitarians, um, oh, hang on, Dr. Bird, Paul, I've got to put my son to bed, so I'm going, I'm obviously not going to change your mind, but I'd suggest you and your friends focus on the last five minutes of my remarks there. Peace. All right. Peace to you. Respect for coming on. Um, but I... I don't like that attitude because that can, um, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be frank. That frankly just sounds like saying, look, you're, you've got a thick head and no matter what I say, I'm not going to change your mind. Um, I don't like that attitude. And, and I think it's actually pessimistic on your part. Like who knows, you could bring up some brilliant evidence and argumentation that could change my mind. Um, I never put it out of the realm of possibility. I think it, I do genuinely think it's virtually impossible that I will change my mind on this, but I only ever say virtually impossible. I always leave that 0.0000000001% chance that maybe I got it wrong. Um, which is why I would likewise say, on the contrary, um, even though I've had some, uh, shall we say, some colorful banter about you in this stream, um, which I, 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 don't, I don't regret because I genuinely do think there is a connection between personality and ideology in many different things. So not just unwarranted. And I'm having fun as well. And I don't mind it when my friends do it to me as well. But uh, yeah, uh, I'd hope that I or someone, whoever could change your mind on this. But either way, either way, peace. You have a good night. <clears throat> anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, what was I saying? What was I saying? Yeah, show the same standards. Um, and importantly, I never see egalitarians try to actually, rather than just bring it, they will always just bring up studies about, oh, men with authority do bad things to women. They will never actually try to find and compare studies well for one very often they just get studies that are either irrelevant or bad quality very often i saw it in um the book discovering biblical equality for example i think i actually there was i actually did a dedicated stream on that how they basically like even if the studies themselves weren't bad they were so imprecise that they were meaningless for the question at hand um and but anyway they, they even when they do that they won't ever i'm yet to ever see Ego, maybe they exist somewhere, but I never ever see egalitarians actually bring up a fair comparison of any studies about um, about violence in egalitarian households. I, I even remember, just off the top of my head, I don't have it with me, but I even remember a reference of a study of uh, domestic violence in, I think, Sweden, which apparently ranked very high in terms of an egalitarian uh, family structure. And yet there was a lot of DV there. Um, so... That's, and that's just that's just off the top of my head. I don't have details on me. Point being, study this fairly. Like, let's actually consider studying this fairly and not just go on the one metric and make that the only thing that, oh, look, um, 
our the good th- biblical theology on the genders um, is entirely determined about by DV statistics. Well, no, we've got, to, we've got to do more than that. There's also psychological manipulation, which there's stereotypes, but it's also based on real, such real things. And I personally know of many, many accounts of guys who've been manipulated and psychologically destroyed by their wives or exes, you name it. <clears throat> and so let's consider that metric as well, um, among, among many others for marriage and all that. And thus, let's actually consider that maybe this is such a multifaceted, such a complex view that you're simply not going to reasonably be able to get to, therefore, patriarchy bad. But my preferred method is just to simply go to the Bible, go exegetical, and just demonstrate that biblical patriarchy is true and established by God, and thus force the egalitarian into an ultimatum. Either consider that maybe your view of the sociological data is wrong, unnuanced, and all that, or just reject the Christian faith entirely. Go for it, your choice. Um. If for them, patriarchy means wife beating adultery, laziness, and they're talking about godless stuff and not about us. Yep, exactly, exactly. Um, although, of course, they would argue and do argue that even well-intended patriarchy uh, tends towards that, um, which is genuinely silly because, again, you could point to how, let's let's say, um, let's say, let's like do statistics of like government versus non-government. Um, if we look at nations that had government versus like had a strong government apparatus, versus those that were basically anarchistic. Um, let's compare how many of them committed genocides. How many anar- how many anarchist communes basically committed genocide? Um, I-, I cannot personally think of any. How many s- how many nations with a strong government, and I don't mean strong in terms of authoritarian, just a consistent founded government, how many of them committed genocide over history? A lot. Because yeah, there is a there is a special susceptibility with authority there. That's granted. That doesn't therefore mean the instrument is bad because once you take away that instrument, you're going to actually realize, oh crap, it was doing a lot of good stuff that we needed it to do. So yeah. Anyway, let's keep going. I should say is I actually agree with Kevin DeYoung that there are biological differences between men and women and those biological differences uh, express themselves in general traits and characteristics specific to men and women. That was a relief. If that's the case, then what's my real beef with Kevin DeYoung? Well, I've got got several things I want to bring up. Uh, first of all, I think Kevin DeYoung is insufficiently Calvinistic. Okay, this is this... seem a rather a strange claim to <laughs> this make against funny. a reformed minister. But if Kevin DeYoung were truly reformed, he would be aware of the doctrine of total depravity, where every every vestige of our desires uh, are, are tainted with sin, tainted with the vice of sin. And if you believe in total depravity, you know, which I do as a card carrying Calvinist, uh, then you would know that that even patriarchy can be corrupted by human depravity. Oh, yeah. Patriarchy can be infected by sin. And if you think just sticking a kind of, you know, buyer beware bumper sticker on or a few kind of, you know, caveats uh, is going to, to stop the more pernicious aspects of patriarchy taking root, then you're gravely mistaken. Oh, hang on, let's go back, let's go back. You kind of can be infected by sin. And if you think just sticking a kind of, you know, buyer beware bumper sticker on or a few kind of, you know, caveats uh, is going to to stop the more pernicious aspects of patriarchy taking root, then you're gravely mistaken. Does Kevin DeYoung actually think that? That just sticking a a new label on patriarchy is going to stop the sin problem? I I read the article. I don't. I don't get that impression at all. That is a really weird, really bizarre observation. And uh, I watched this before, so I guess my comments came early. But basically everything I just gave in that, um, in what I said before, basically applies to this. Yeah, patriarchy can be infected by sin. Government can be infected by sin. Schools can be infected by sin. Women. (gasps) No, really? Women? Mothers? They can be infected by sin. They can be abused with their... The special tools they have can be abused in unique ways. So I want to say cars can be abused, guns, knives, computers. Everything is susceptible to sin with the fall. I think Kevin DeYoung knows that. I mean, come on, bird, come on, mate, come on. I think he knows that. And that's the problem when you realize that everything is susceptible to sin and that just because you can point to how a certain thing um, um, when used sinfully 
has a uniquely bad um, result in a certain metric. So in this case, that patriarchy when abused has a uniquely bad result of say domestic violence, abuse of women, oppression, all that jazz. Even if we point that out and absolutely grant that, that doesn't mean Jack because then we can do the exact same thing with literally anything with cars. If we didn't have cars, how many, how many vehicle accidents would we have? Oh, zero, of course. If we didn't have government, how many um, human rights abuses would we have uh, by, by government? By definition, zero, of course. So that's not enough to just say, oh, look, there could be some bad stuff at Patreon. That doesn't actually mean anything. You, because <clears throat> it involves, and, and, and De Young's article talks about that, where he talks about the uh, the cost of dismantling patriarchy. Because, um, yeah, because... Because ba basically, because patriarchy is fundamentally, any anthropologist would tell you this, even those who like to rant and rave about, oh, look, you've got this niche African tribe here with um, with a matriarchal system. Or, oh, look, you've got these American Indians who have very high status leadership women and then ignore how the men still have a certain key roles that only they have or whatever. And ignore they, and then they ignore the vast majority of all human civilizations, settlements, tribes, and all that stuff where... Generally speaking, there is a patriarchy of some kind. There is a father rule. Okay, so it's just it's just a reality. It is a, it is foundational to civilization, and it's, it's there's good reason for it with respect to men's um, physiology, with the male mind, and all that. That is suited to generally speaking. Obviously, there's exceptions. There's exceptions. Exceptions don't break the rule. That's stupid. If anyone brought that up, that the way the male mind works is better suited for high intensity, high responsibility, rulership roles in a way that a woman's mind generally is not. And a woman's mind is built in a certain way and her physiology uh, in terms of, let's just, just one example, in terms of nurturing, uh, in terms of managing certain tasks in a way that a male mind generally is not good at doing. And so that's the whole point. That's basically the whole point of the complementarian word, complementarity. A complementarity? I think that's it. Complementality. I think I uh, cannot, cannot do words today, but yeah. Um, point being, this is a foundational aspect of just human civilization. So yeah, it, if you, if you just ignore that, then you're basically lost. The same way, if you believe in total depravity, then you've got to be very aware, very concerned that sin, sinful natures, aggression, evil, greed, lust, a lust for power, a lust for flesh, that that is going to affect men in the conduct of patriarchy. Yep, and nobody denies that. Patriarchy, because it involves power over others, is especially susceptible yep. to the corruption of the human heart. Very true. Likewise, government. Government has a special um, emphasis and uh, possession of power and authority in a way that non-government entities do not. And thus, there is a special susceptibility of sinful men in government to do heinous things, absolutely heinous, evil things. And I see that Kevin DeYoung does not seem to be afraid for women in the hands of angry authoritarian men. So on that- That's so silly. That is so silly because- I can see why Kevin DeYoung doesn't go so much on that because that is literally all we talk about. I see it on CBMW all the time. When they try to bring up something positive about the term patriarch or about male rule and all that, they are always groveling on their knees about, it means it's not about it's not about being a boss or a hierarchy against men. It means about loving your wife. It means about cherishing or sacrificing yourself for her. And men who abuse their wives are bad and all that. They, commentarians are always groveling about that stuff. They're always paying sacrifice to the egalitarian overlords with acknowledging abuses of patriarchy and male rule. We don't need to do that every single bloody time. That's just silly. That is absolutely silly. Um, so if De Young doesn't do it, so what? He's, he's, he's making a case for a goodness of something. Does he acknowledge that there are bad men in authority in over their wives? Yeah. I highly doubt he would deny that. And I think that's actually really silly, if not straight up condescending to suggest he doesn't. But you don't have to, we don't have to grovel about that all the time. We can just make a positive case for something. That's it, just a simple positive case, especially when that thing, which is the case here, is maligned entirely as a bad thing 
all the time. So no, that's ridiculous. Or I would suggest some remedial lessons in Calvinism. How do you stop or how do you safeguard the practice of patriarchy, knowing that all patriarchal men do experience total depravity? And how do you how do you uh, hold back the effects of sin in government, given that all men in government experience the effects of total depravity? And all men who drive cars, and all men who are police officers. Same argument. Patriarchy is particularly susceptible to sins of authority, power, and abuse. The second thing I want to say is I believe Kevin DeYoung's article was insufficiently biblical. Uh, in that Kevin DeYoung doesn't address the view as to whether, you know, patriarchy, you know, maybe it has been in some degree or other, in some way or other, ubiquitous in human culture. Oh, oh how do yeah. you know that's not part of the fall? Because, you know, when I read, you know, Genesis, you know, when I read the Bible, um, I notice that one of the consequences of the fall is that men blame women for their problems. Uh, but before that, Adam and Eve were equal. They were both image bearers of... Okay. <laughs> the dictionary entry of patriarchy, according to Dr. Bird. Um, so you look it up on, like, I don't know, Merriam-Webster, whatever the top result on Google is. Patriarchy, noun, men blaming women for their problems. Okay. Uh, okay, righty-o, mate. <laughs> and he's going on to the Genesis thing, so I'm actually going to show something soon once he once he really gets to the point. Of God, they were they were both there in the garden together. They were a a complement to each other. And I also note that Jesus, uh, he can talk about certain things. We you know, agree with that. It's so funny because it's it's them who frame power and authority as just such a unilateral bad thing that there can't be such a um, c harmony between the idea of one party having power and authority over another, but also that both parties still complement each other because the other party, even if it doesn't have power and authority over the other one, still has something that that authority party does not have and thus they fit together. It's, just, it's a dumb dichotomy. It's a really dumb dichotomy. Egalitarianism is pretty much absent in the Bible. Exactly, exactly. And yeah, this is great to note. A system based on patterns of scripture is not susceptible, more susceptible to sin than one constructing defines. But exactly, exactly. That's the problem of using the very generic umbrella idea of patriarchy that's divorced from biblical principles. By definition, we're all Christians. A patriarchy that follows, that faithfully follows biblical principles is not going to be anywhere close susceptible to sin as any other non-Christian system, basically. Not not by a long shot. <clears throat> and of course, Dr. Burb will deny that there is biblical patriarchy, um, but that's silly and we can disprove that pretty, pretty easily. I think we should note that this idea that power tends to corrupt is just an Anglo prejudice. And besides Lord Acton, who formulated the tedious slogan, originally was referring just to Vatican I. Really? That's actually base. No way. Hang on. I'm going to look that up. That's actually hilarious. Acton... Oh, it corrupts absolutely. I mean, in terms of the Pope, that's that's genuinely true because they're basically it's not just giving the Pope power, it's making the Pope God on earth. That's functionally what it is. But uh yeah, that's true. Truth comes, you've got to stop apolog time comes, you've got to stop apologizing for the truth. That's true. Biblical egalitarianism is a Marxist style. Very true. Usually the evidence of matriarchy is misread. The woman ruling rules because uh because she's someone's wife or someone's daughter, or due to her being the oldest in the tribe. Yeah, that's 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 often the case. There's things will count can't count for there. Anyway. You know, being as it was from the beginning. You know, that's in Matthew 19. You can refer back to a time when there was equality and harmony between the sexes. Okay, define equality and harmony. Because we can affirm that too. But we have different understandings of those words. We affirm equality of, and I personally hate that word equality. I never like to use it. But in a basic sense, yes, we can affirm equality of value before the eyes of God in that very basic sense. Yes, we can. Harmony? Yes, absolutely. They had different roles. They had different functions. They had different ranks. And yet there was a harmony between them. Just read most, honestly, one of the most beautiful passages on this, um, both 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and also uh, 1 Clement chapter... I want to say 36 um, chapter in first Clement that basically describes how in an army there's soldiers, tributes, tribunes, legates and all that. And yet they are all essential parts of the body that all work together in one submission. That's literally what, um, what Clement actually says. Uh, 
one submission. Even though there are diff there are officers and individuals of different ranks and authority, they all work under one emperor under one submission. That's that's beautiful. That's a beautiful um, demonstration of of uh, of hierarchy and harmony at the same time. Which means we should be moving into post patriarchal relationships between men and women, and that's, oh, that's doubly stupid. true. I think if we consider the Lord's Prayer, no. the things to be on earth as it is in heaven. Oh yeah, the Lord's Prayer. Um, our Father. Not our gender neutral spirit being, our Father who art in heaven. And yes, how it is in heaven is a patriarchy. The whole creation is modeled on the on on the wider patterns of the heavens and creations. There is a there is a great um th there is fantastic typology between God's relationship to creation and that this is reflected in man's re relationship to woman, which is reflected in Christ's relationship to the church and Yahweh's relationship to Israel and so on and so on and so forth, until it eventually um, uh, consummates at the marriage supper of the Lamb at the eschaton when the bride of Christ, the church, is finally represented before the King Christ himself under his authority and yet in perfect, perfect harmony. So no, that's ridiculous. He, heaven is not an egalitarian utopia. That's ridiculous. Yes, there will, will functionally from the descriptions of Christ, they won't be, won't be married nor given in marriage in heaven. I, if anyone has contrary um, uh, interpretations, that'd be really funny. But it, it, Christ is clear with that. But why won't there be uh, marriage nor be given in marriage and thus, by extension, no, pa no human per se, into human patriarchy? in heaven because the ultimate fulfillment of patriarchy will have been done the marriage of the church to christ i agree i don't worship the ungendered monad with <laughs> okay that's a good one i'll give you that i'll give you that bird dr bird i'll give you that but the saints will reign together with christ revelation 5 10 yes that's true and yet it's still christ himself it's still it you still you still got the procession of authority of God the Father to Christ, Christ to the man, Christ to the wife, uh, the man to the wife, and then of course as extended as well to the church as well, um, where that co-reigning is function is going to be functionally the co-reigning as a queen with a king, and still the king who has the who has the precedence over that. But even then, in heaven, it's not going to matter a whole ton because the whole because many of the issues for why God established patriarchy functionally um, are just not going to be there anymore. But yes, it's going to be the ultimate fulfillment of patriarchy in heaven. But there's no authority between the saints and the new creation. Um, that's I, I didn't I didn't say that. But on earth, yes, there still is. There's I mean, you're you're a priest, aren't you? If I'm not mistaken, that you still have some kind of authority there. Um, yeah, and of course, it also depends on how you define authority. That's a whole other whole other issue right there. You know, we should not be working to redeem or fix patriarchy, but we should be trying to transform male-female relationships into something that anticipates and reflects the new creation. In other words, fix patriarchy. <laughs> That's true. I mean, yes, you're right there to an extent, but here's the thing. We still live in our fallen creation. Yes, absolutely, we should anticipate the new creation, but we should also still follow the commands given by God and by the apostles, which we would thus say, for example, wives submit to your husbands as to the Lord. Uh, husbands love your wives as Christ love the church. And of course, of course, I know you're going to disagree with that, but that's kind of that's that that that's going to kind of be my point. Where this argument of yours is is functionally going to be predicated on egalitarian readings of certain passages, which we don't grant, and then so that just kind of just takes us back to square one. How do we read these passages? Where there is no patriarchy, there is uh, there is only theoarchy. There is the rule of God. Yes, rule of God the Father, the ultimate patriarch of the universe. And the husband's body belongs to not to him, but to his wife. Absolutely true. Yeah, because they are one body. Patriarchy is still true. <laughs> oh, there is the rule of Christ and us reigning with Christ together in the new creation. So if you go back to the original creation the earth side if you look at the new creation you know the the end side there's no patriarchy there yes there is god the father and if we believe our and christ his son by the good creation and heading towards the new creation and if we're trying to anticipate 
to that in our own life. That's what Jesus says, you know, as it was in the beginning, that's what you should be aspiring for now. Then I don't think it's there's and, a lot of and that's that's another example of passage interpretations that I just don't grant. I don't grant that there wasn't patriarchy in the beginning. Um, if anyone's actually curious, this is actually my article I put on the It's Good to Be a Man website. Uh, the website that uh, <laughs> that your friends were complaining about, uh, that, uh, that uh, Amy Bird was uh, complaining about, Dr. Bird. <laughs> I actually contributed there once. Um, it was definitely my honor, but I'll post in the chat right now for anyone who's curious. Um, arguably, I, I believe that the uh, Genesis 3.15 passage is the most um, powerful egalitarian proof text because it seems explicit on the face of it. Um, but I think contextual considerations will kind of get rid of that, especially um, the certainty with which we can establish a patriarchal reading of other biblical passages, and we don't want to exactly draw a contradiction. Um, yeah, it's been a long time. I have been a while since I've read it. I don't know how much I'd change or not, but uh, otherwise, fundamentally, I, that article's good. You people highly recommend it. Biblical support for saying that patriarchy is a good thing, unless you want to say that patriarchy is simply the least worst option in a fallen world. But that's not the view presented in Scripture. So I don't think Kevin DeYoung's view on this is particularly scriptural. That's true. It's not the least worst option. It is the only option. <laughs> as um, as my man uh, Evan said far above at the beginning, you're always going to get patriarchy. You'll either get God our Father or the Father of Lies, which is a brilliant way of framing it. Uh, and likewise, the guys like Pastor Michael Foster, you're always in our world, just with how humans work, you're going to get patriarchy of some kind, either good or bad. It's always going to happen. Pog, mate, good to see you. And he's commenting to Michael Bird. If earthly lives should reflect the new creation, why would God command his church to multiply the government to punish evildoers and parents to practice discipline in the new creation? None of those commands will be needed. Very good point, Pog. Very good po point. There is an extent and there is a truth in which our lives should emulate the new creation. And yet there's still earthly realities around us that we have to deal with that won't be present in the new creation. Um, yeah. Unless someone just wants to become like a straight up monastic, which is cringe. The third problem I have is Kevin DeYoung moves from biology to application <clears throat> and he misses everything in between. So, okay, look, let's, let's grant, shall we, that men are biologically fit with uh, strength and the aggression you know, the assertiveness that enables them to rule families, okay? So patriarchy, some would say, and this is what Kevin DeYoung argues, is a natural consequence of male-female biology, mm -hmm. okay? There's three things wrong with that, okay? First sub-point, we have what is called the deontic fallacy. Oh, here we that go. That is and is cannot create an ought. In other words, the fact that men are stronger and more naturally prone to aggression, more so than women, that only proves that men are stronger and naturally prone to aggression. It does not mean they should rule over women. Or note that you can't move from an is to an ought. And I would even say a lot of our ethics tries to explicitly stop men and women from doing the things that are natural, you know, um, stealing, theft, sexual aggression. I mean, you can find these things in nature. I've, I've read articles about the, the sexual violence that male dolphins do to female dolphins. And, okay, so there's a lot of problems with this. One, conflation of nat natural urges with specific applications of that natural urge. So um, looking at De Young's argument, how men are physically stronger and then at some way, at some point, therefore leads to the conclusion that men are more fit for leadership and then saying, and then equating that with, oh, look, animals, I, I, I think is Bird, Dr. Bird's what he's talking about. Animals experience more sexual aggression. And so by the same metric, that would mean good thing. Well, no, it, 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 it wouldn't because that's a very specific and sinful application of that um, as, as explicated in Holy Scripture. Whereas the mere fact, that's not comparable to the mere fact that men are stronger. An actual comparison would be the mere fact that men are stronger is comparable to the mere fact that men experience sexual urges. And for both of those things, there's good and bad ways to apply that. Um, but the big problem with this, like it's honestly like the deontic fallacy uh, as Dr. Berg called, I haven't heard it called that before, but okay, cool. Um, it's, it's a borderline meme because we do, Christians do at some level affirm is goes to all. We have to, we have to. 
the mere fact that God is sovereign, is creator. We there is morality, there is goodness, um, uh, stuff that is defined by God, whether His will or His nature or both. And so, yes, we do believe, at least in that very significant area, that there is that is does lead to ought. And then, of course, with this with this issue, Kevin Young's just making just making honestly a very common sense observation based on certain presuppositions, but frankly necessary presuppositions given our view of God's sovereignty and deliberate acts in creation, where we look at these significant uh, forms of how uh, how human nature is developed, and thus we deduce from that um, the proper roles of such persons. So with men, for example, the general observation that men are stronger, men have a certain uh, men have a certain uh, mental capacity, not not in terms of men smarter, women dumber, not that, but men are just composed psychologically and physically in such a way that makes them optimal for rulership in a way that women are not. And then vice versa for women in terms of issues like uh, nurturing newborns, for example, uh, among many other things. And so it's just a very simple, it's a presupposition, but it's a very basic common sense and biblical presupposition to derive that given this very clear, significant uh, feature of human nature, therefore there's naught. But of course, it's not always purely on that. This is not purely just, oh, look, men stronger, therefore ruler. This is taken in, co- in consult with the great examples of scripture, with its typologies of God, who's a father, and he's authoritative over his, in, in a good sense, authoritative over his wife and his children, the strength of men and warriors and so on and so forth across many, many other things. Even the mockery, I think in one of the, in one of the minor prophets where uh, God himself in his speech uh, mocks the army of the Assyrians or, uh, or of Israel, I forgot who, but basically saying they're a bunch of women, <laughs> they fight like women. And so, uh, and that's a bad thing. Um, very sexist Yahweh there, very sexist. Um, the point being, it's it's nature, it's the fact of nature combined with the example of Holy Scripture. And you take it together, definitive cumulative case, very definitive. Who is Michael Bird? Dr. Michael Bird, biblical scholar, Anglican clergy. Um, unfortunately, has a number of cringe takes. And he's here in the chat. He's here in the chat tonight. Pretty, pretty trippy. I'm not going to lie. That caught me off guard quite well. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, anyway. But we don't look at dolphins and say, well, dolphins are sexually aggressive, therefore it must be okay. De Young's talking about humans? Is he? Does he talk about, I don't remember, does he talk about how animals do something, therefore humans should as well? Or I, I, I don't see where birds getting this. Dolphins do this. Is that, I don't, I don't see... Young making that argument at all. I mean, he's fundamentally talking about human nature, human features. I don't know, maybe whatever. Uh, we, we don't use that because we recognize that is and ought are different concepts, and simply replicating what happens in the natural world is not always a good thing. If we went for the natural world, conflation of acts happening with potential, with power, with capacity, big conflation. Sexual uh, sexual violence is not the same thing as sexual and aggressive capacity. Not the same thing. Not the same thing. It is from the capacity of men's strength, of men's psychology and all that, that it is argued by, by De Young and others, including myself, that men have a special fittingness for rulership roles that women generally do not have. So it's not, so no, it's simply not comparable entirely as, as the basis of our ethics, then we would believe- it's not entirely. He, he never does that entirely. No way. De Young has biblical arguments too. Whatever. In a world where might makes right. Okay. But that is explicitly not what Christian ethics are about. Well, okay. Bit of a nitpick, but technically, yes, it is. <laughs> the, the might of God, his sovereignty, his power is functionally what undergirds his authority over the entire earth and Christians. So, eh, and, and the only reason why might is right is otherwise not necessarily true in the interhuman level is because the even more mighty one said no. So eh, eh, eh. all this anyways is a bit of sophis- is a bit of sophistry. We have prescriptions in God's word. Nature is damaged in our reading of it as well. Special revelation tells us uh, we obey, period. Yeah, 100% true. Although, of course, Dr. Bird will say, no, I dispute your reading of scripture. Uh, he's wrong, so whatever. doesn't matter. But anyway. It's not simply going with the grain of nature where it's the right or the duty of the strong to dominate the weak. We believe the exact opposite. Where does Tiang say that? 
it's the right or the duty of the strong to dominate the weak. And that's not an accidental word. Dominate does have a negative connotation today. Um, do the strong have the, well, the the right, quote unquote, no, no one like De Young would say that the strong by the mere fact of them being strong and regardless of any other qualifying or disqualifying features have a right to rule someone. No, no. De Young, is, De Young and others are saying that the natural strength of men gives men as a gender, as a category, a right or rather a duty of authority that women do not have. But that is not the same thing as saying specific men, for example, having that right or not, because many men don't have that right or capacity or authority. It's big category error here, big category error. We believe the strong must protect and nurture the weak. Okay. Yeah, we absolutely agree with that. Absolutely. This is such an egalitarian meme. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. We don't deny this. The whole point of why we push patriarchy is because it's all about the care and service of the weak and their protection and God's glory. That's the whole point of it, mate. We know that. Oh, my gosh. This is such an egalitarian meme. Like, unironically. Unironically. And I'm... I'll be blunt in saying that this is just not just me being a complimentary because I can recognize when people of my side do a crap job at what they do. Um, but I genuinely am convinced that complementarians, even of the soft variant all the way up to patriarchalists, generally speaking, are orders of magnitude better at representing egalitarian positions than egalitarians are of complementarians of almost any end of the spectrum. That's, and this is just another example of that. This is just, oh, so no, no, mate, no. That, that's, that's, uh, that is at the essence of Christian ethics, if you ask me. Yes. The second thing I would say as a sub point here is sex and gender are not the same thing. Oh, here we sex go. Sex pertains to our reproductive here functions and the traits that generally. Hey, everyone, if you haven't already, um, totally unrelated, Google John Money, the guy who basically invented the gender thing. <laughs> Google his experiment, his experiments, John Money. Anyway, totally unrelated. Let's keep going. We typify male and female behavior, but gender are the culturally specific ways that societies attempt to regulate relationships between the sexes. And I would argue that patriarchy is not natural to our biology. It's more about gender. It is biology interpreted in a socio-cultural key, okay? And, and can Dr. Bird tell us where and how the miraculous coincidence of civilizations and tribes of all stripes across the world just so happened to come up with patriarchal systems if it wasn't actually emergent from biology? And of course, again, pointing to exceptions of matriarchal quote-unquote societies assuming the data is even being interpreted correctly does not change that at all the fact of men dominating basically positions of authority a ubiquitous feature across um uh what should we call it? across human civilizations and tribes like it, genuinely curious how, can is, does dr bird really believe that's just like i don't know a coincidence or perhaps like the results of a super early like council of conspiracy by men in like the stone age when humans were all close together they conspired hey let's make men dominate it has nothing to do with our biology we're just going to get together and dominate women <laughs> is uh that's functionally what this sounds like here so no that's just the the, the gender the gender sex dichotomy i can grant that's a valid category distinction between biological sex and the social expression of um male and female but a hard separation like that no absolutely silly and scripture doesn't do that scripture scripture basically if you wanted to apply gender sex categories in scripture scripture is clear a man cannot adopt the gender of a woman a biological man cannot ad adopt the gender of woman and vice versa um and, and obviously i don't think dr bird's a pro pro training or whatever i think he agrees um but otherwise the implications for his view are pretty like bizarre. What I have, what I think is wrong with De Young's argument, what he calls nature or biology, I think is the cultural way 
that people try to or societies try to regulate the relationship between the sex in other words he's based on what where did those where did those understandings and beliefs regarding the regulation of society come from taking something from gender why did so many civilizations just think hmm, let's have men be in charge of the most important positions or most authoritative rather not necessarily the most important positions this is just a coincidence i guess it's just flip of the coin pretty magical and reading that back into our biology uh, the third sub point here is to say that if patriarchy is natural then which patriarchy okay um whose patriarchy most accords with nature i mean again bible i mean you, you do agree with that dr bird don't you <laughs> that's what we'd say patriarchy is not one thing there are different ways of being patriarchal yeah that's true yeah. uh you've got the patriarchy of the biblical narratives where yep. abraham pimped out his wife to pharaoh which i'm pretty sure was not a good example of patriarchy oh, we agree you've got the patriarchy of medieval chivalry you've got the patriarchy of 17th century japanese samurai bushido codes of ethics you've got the patriarchy of african tribes you've mm -hmm. got the patriarchy of melanesian islands whose pat version of patriarchy is rooted in nature mm, that's true um whose version of government is best rooted in nature or god's uh god's law god's revelation good christian ethics and all that. whose version of government is that because you got the governments of japan with their system you got the governments uh, the uh re the republics and monarchies of europe you've got the chinese monarchy with their concept of the mandate of heaven you've got basically councils of elders in many tribe tribal systems who, who who's whose government whose government do we choose we can do the exact same thing with that yes there is great variance and yet, the mere fact that you are still referring to all those things as patriarchy, Dr. Bird, is proof that you do recognize there is a conceptual overlap between otherwise very different systems, a very basic conceptual overlap of certain men having the or having certain responsibility and authority over a wider group, be it a family or an entire tribe or a nation and all that jazz. It's, oh man, it's, it's pretty fantastic and, and it's, it's it's so funny how he mentioned like all the super diverse places across the world where patriarchy was expressed like kind of just proving my point from earlier that it's just across the world <laughs> this line of argument simply defines patriarchy as having nothing to do with fatherhood or husbandry it is only the alien works of patriarchs harming that which is under their care yeah exactly just like look bad thing is patriarchy Paul, you're right, but it doesn't matter what we see in nature. Will he accept we all are bisexuals because animals hit anything? Special revelation, Bible. I mean, I, I, I don't know if he'd say that because I think he's actually trying to dispute the appeals to nature here. If patriarchy real, why humans multicultural, bro? <laughs> he's unironically proven our point. Patriarchy is natural and ubiquitous. Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah. Whose version? Now, he, he did say, coming up in the last five minutes now, he did say that the last five minutes are the most uh, poignant to listen to, so I can't wait for that. And then I've got to finish this. Uh, yeah. Patriarchy is natural. Now, what I suspect Kevin DeYoung wants to say is that his patriarchy, the patriarchy that he experiences in an affluent suburban, highly individualized, technologically advanced Based. society like North Carolina, that's... The, that's the patriarchy of nature that's the patriarchy of the bible i mean that's that's a very uncharitable assumption that you would actually think that someone as careful and scholarly as kevin de young would actually make that argument my patriarchy in affluent america is natural does he do you do you actually think he's gonna say that dr bird that's just that is so silly mate that is really silly and this is the problem. Everybody wants nature and God on their side for all of their views. But I submit to you that Kevin DeYoung's view of patriarchy uh, is an expression of his geographical, social, economic, historical, and ethnic location. No. What he calls patriarchy might have less to do with nature and more to do with religion in North Carolina. And that's why we've always got to be very careful. And, and notice as well, why like he's pinning so much on the nature argument from DeYoung. But 
Dr. Bird, that's not the only argument he made. He appealed to he made appeals to creation, to, to scripture. So he's basing it on that as well. Nowhere does he even does he even imply at all that his specific context expression of patriarchy is the natural one. He's almost certainly doing just what I do and arguing for the basic concept of patriarchy that underpins many different expressions. That's just really, really uncharitable. With appeals to nature in moral reasoning. Now, let me be clear on this. I think nature can and does have a role in our moral reasoning, but it's not a trump card. And here's the thing. Everybody wants God on nature on their side. I have read arguments where people have said Marxism is natural. Okay. And that's true. If you're an ant colony, something like Marxism is true. Yeah. But we're humans. <laughs> we're humans, mate. What? <laughs> it's not true in a wolf pack. Let me tell you that much. So some people say, well, capitalism is according um, to. Dr. Bird, we're talking about humans. Okay, wolves, ants, I don't care. We're talking about humans here. <laughs> I don't think Feminism is according to nature. Patriarchy is according to nature. Everybody wants their view, their perspective, authorized by God and rooted in nature. Okay, and that, that oh my gosh, that argument. Oh, well, a bunch of other people disagree. So, oh, your view. Blah, blah, blah. That's so silly. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, a bunch of other people say something else. Okay, they're wrong. Here's why. I have arguments to show why I am correct and they are wrong. This is exactly like just one for one, just like, oh, you Christian, you believe in your God. Oh, so everyone and everyone's 3,000, 3 million, six gorillion other gods are all wrong, but your single God is just right. Oh, but so many other people believe that. This is the same argument. It's so darn silly. So absolutely silly, mate. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, okay. Other people argue that things I don't think are natural are natural. I disagree with them. His why, his arguments, his evidence. It's it's really not that hard. Now, something I read many years ago that tipped me off about this. It's There's a book called The Moral Authority of Nature, edited by Lorraine Daston and Fernando Vidal. And this is what they said. Listen to this. Almost every ideology seeks to sign up nature for its cause, mm. to bolster its shaky political credentials with nature's authority. Just because that authority can be so widely commandeered, critics imagine nature as a kind of blank screen or mirror on which the most diverse human fantasies may be projected. Mm. Paradoxically, the most obdurate authority, nature's necessity, has been joined in these accounts to the most malleable of cultural constructs nature as anything you can make it that's true yeah a lot of people do abuse uh, appeals to nature like that or well, especially for example like homosexualists when they'll argue oh look um seahorses have gay sex or whatever it is therefore hum that's which is obviously retarded but so what we're actually trying to make arguments that our appeals to nature are relevant and we're not even just relying on nature like the young and I know he's not talking to me or anything, but DeYoung isn't just applying appealing to nature. That's one appeal he makes, a very valid one at that, one which you don't address very well. You make bad category uh, conflations. Um, but otherwise, this is just irrelevant. We can agree this is a phenomenon that does happen. That doesn't, this giving a powerful or poignant quote like this isn't just going to hand wave away and appeal to nature. DeYoung still has arguments and you didn't really get to them. So there we go. You've got to be very careful using nature uh, as the basis for your argument because everyone's going to say that God is on nature is on their side. Yeah, and they're wrong. Okay, uh, the fourth point. Um, Kevin DeYoung, I think, posits a false dichotomy. Um, at, at the very end of his argument, Kevin DeYoung ends up saying, basically, it comes down to patriarchy or anarchy. That's what yeah. he says. It's patriarchy or it's anarchy. So it, it basically comes down to this. Do you believe in, A, patriarchy with strong fathers, caring mothers and stable families? Or, B, do you believe in anarchy with absent fathers, negligent mothers on crack, family breakdown, pets rising up against their owners, people eating their grandparents, the criminalization of nuclear families, and governments restricting procreation to seven yearly festivals called Pon Fa, which is from Star Trek. Uh, is that what you want? Do you want A or do you want B? Well, when you pose it that way, I mean, A does sound pretty good, but just what if, just hear me out, what if 
there was a third option. What if there is an option C? We can acknowledge the biological differences between men and women, even the complementarity of maleness and femaleness. And what if we interpret them as Christians through the lens of creation and new creation with a view to promoting positive and healthy relationships between the sexes? And this basically just goes back to the central arguments and question about biblical passages. So it's, so I'd just be like, yeah, I agree with that, but it means that you'd be wrong because I'm right. <laughs> oh, man, it's not, but it's not a false dichotomy. I, I just, it's much too long of a thing to argue right now, but just to give my thought in summary, all well, it's not. We've seen um, the effects of the uh, the authority and the responsibility of the man in the household, what that does to our society, what that does to our world. Um, anything from uh, having rowdy, less controlled, less disciplined kids all the way to straight up breakdown of entire towns, cities, all that jazz. That's just general thoughts. So I'm not going to give a full throated argument about that but you, you could if just take a big big picture view of all this stuff um there's science behind it as well um there was all that there was all that um that study that good study on the religious inclinations of children who had either both parents or just a father or just a mother um and church attendance of christian children with christian parent with a christian mother was much lower compared to that with a single christian father um, but it was best, obviously, with a Christian father and mother. Um, I remember seeing some egalitarian try to give a cope, like, refutation of that study, but it didn't really work. Um, that's just off the top of my head. Uh, yeah, point being, this last point is just kind of a proxy for the main biblical arguments, which take us back to square one. Um, but, yeah, I guess that's pretty much all for now. That's, uh, that's all I need to do. I need to head to bed right now. So, anyway, people, uh, this was more interesting than I expected. Dr. Bird himself came along um, and there is the temptation to try and tone. The, the, I'm not going to lie. When he came on, there was the temptation to kind of uh, tone down my opinions of him, but I, I hope not. Like that's the best way I can show respect. I His views are general. Are genuinely like bad. I genuinely believe that. Um, and he's not a good role model. I genuinely believe that as well. Um, the humor, all our humor about the whole, oh, the soy look and all this and that stand by that it's true <laughs> and it's funny um but yeah that was a surprise that was genuinely pretty cool um that he came on anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this sesh um yep cool stuff in the works cool cool stuff happening in the channel have a lovely day or evening god bless